Chapter 781, Finally Found You, the giant change inside the art room forced out the shadow which was hiding there. Chen Ge had extremely good vision with the aid from Yin Yang vision. With one glance, he managed to match the escaping shadow with the one that came from room 413. I've finally found you. Nails kept stabbing into Chen Ji's body. The pain that it brought was not that serious, what he hated was the feeling that his life was slowly fading. The shadow made the first move, but Chen Gu was closer to the door, and thus, he reached it faster than the shadow. Chen Gu knew that the enemy was not in its corporeal form, so he might be able to stop it. Therefore, he decided to close the door that had started to bleed. The change continued in the art room. Just as everything was about to get swallowed up by blood, Chen Gu chose a method that was no different from suicide. You wish to make me your scapegoat, so I'll pull you down into hell with me. We'll hold hands as we head toward death. Maybe we'll end up as good friends in our next life. Chen Ji's maddened solution indeed gave the shadow a shock. The shadow paused where he was for a moment before extending both hands to grab the doorknob. Want to run? Chen Ge blocked at the door. The nails that were hidden in his palm pierced toward the shadow. He used his fingers to shield the nails from view. He only allowed the pointy end of the nails to poke through the gap between his fingers when he was about to make contact with the shadow. The shadow initially thought that Chen Gu would not be able to harm him, so he did not put up any guard. That was until he was pierced by the nails at his neck. Chen Ji's heart was hardened after going through so many trial missions. Rationality and madness should be two opposite qualities, but they melted together perfectly in this man. Chen Ge knew that he likely only had one chance to strike, so he chose the most fatal spot to attack. The nails pierced into the shadow's throat, knocking his head to the side. If he was still alive, this blow would have taken his life. I was acting out of kindness when I helped you, but you want to make me your scapegoat. We certainly have some scores to settle. The pain and curse that he was experiencing was thanks to the human shadows inside room 413. Therefore, Chen Gu did not hold back at all. Seeing that the nails could damage the shadow, Chen Gu did not give the shadow any chance to retaliate. He pulled out another sharp nail from his pocket and aimed it at the shadow's eye. The shadow's head was titled on his shoulder. After being ambushed once, he no longer dared underestimate Chen Gu. He retreated several steps to maintain a steady distance between them. More blood leaked out from the corners of the room. This art room was slowly changing, like the blood world was overlapping with the real world, and the former was leaking into the latter. It would be very dangerous to stay inside the room, but Chen Ge blocked the exit and refused to budge. Since you want me dead, I'm not going to let you leave. Chen Ge said that with a smile on his face. He knew the shadow now had the urge to strangle him. However, there was a process to finding a scapegoat. In other words, if the shadow wanted Chen Gu to be his scapegoat, he had to make sure that Chen Gu died the same way as he did. This was similar to why those who drowned wanted to pull their victims into the depths and why those who died from hanging would influence others to do the same. Of course, this was merely Chen Ji's own opinion. If the understanding of scapegoats inside the door and outside the door was different, there was nothing he could do. After all, he was already in this state, there was no turning back, he could only press forward. The art room was slowly swallowed up by blood. Chin Gu and the shadow froze, at an impasse, before the door, no one was able to move. This situation was very rare. Normally speaking, after the ghost found a scapegoat, they would hurry to reincarnate or possess the victim's body. Spectres that were below red spectres could not leave their item of possession for long. The scapegoat would be trapped around the place of death for a long time and could not go after the ghost that had harmed him in the first place. Therefore, this kind of situation where the scapegoat found the original ghost and the original ghost was halted by the scapegoat was very rare. Don't you plan to say something for yourself? When he saw the human shadow, Chin Ji's heart dropped back to his stomach. The curse on him could claim his life at any moment. 
He had to undo the curse, but he could not confirm where the shadow was. Going to the art room had merely been a guess, but who could have known that the shadow was really hiding there? The shadow didn't seem to possess the ability to speak. He kept waving his arms, gesturing something. Chen Gu could see the shadow's agitation. In fact, he could sense a trace of fear from the shadow. If they stayed inside the art room any longer, something incredibly bad was about to happen. Chen Gu did not wish to die. He had done all that just to convey his attitude. Now that the shadow was scared into submission, Chen Ji's tone softened. Remove the curse from me, and we won't owe each other anything. In fact, I might be able to help you find your next scapegoat. Live together or die together, the choice is yours. He believed the shadow would not reject him. After all, this was non-beneficial to either of them, but several seconds later, the shadow's reaction caused Chin Gu to frown. The shadow shook his head, waved his hands, and then used his finger to write out several words in the air. Chin Gu finally understood what he was trying to say. Chin Gu had no idea whether the shadow was lying to him or not. In any case, before he achieved his goal, he was going to move away from the door. Can't be removed? Then can you delay the time of death, like give me a few more weeks or a few more months? After Chinga said that, the shadow thought about it before shaking his head. This cannot, that cannot. Do you think I am easily bullied, or do you think I'm not willing to die together with you? I advise you to think about this clearly. This school is so big. After you tricked me in room 413, you didn't leave immediately. This means that you do not know how to leave this place either. Even if I really become your scapegoat, in the future, I will figure out a way to find you and how these nails pin onto my body. I will slowly pin them back onto you. After a pause, Chinga added, I am not threatening you, I'm just telling you the truth. Now only by working together will we be able to achieve a win-win solution. Perhaps Chin Ji's words convinced the shadow, or maybe the art room being swallowed by blood was getting too dangerous, but the shadow finally changed its mind. He signaled for Chin Gu to show him his hand. I'm warning you, do not play any tricks. Even if I die, I will not let you go, Chin Gu said coldly. The shadow's head was titled on his shoulder, and a nail poked through his neck. He looked worse for wear. He had no idea whether he had found a scapegoat or some kind of demon that he could not shake loose. Helpless, the shadow grabbed Chin Ji's hand. His finger touched Chin Ji's palm lightly, and the lines that were darkening stopped increasing in color as if they felt some kind of influence. Chapter 782 That is our bond the palm print stopped turning black, and the anxiety curling around Chin Ji's heart slowly disappeared. He felt like his breathing had become smoother. The human shadow was not lying to him. On the brink of death, he had made the correct choice. After the Chin Ji's palm print stopped darkening, the shadow's body started to waver even though he had almost coagulated into a physical form earlier. I still don't know if I can trust you. Even though Chin Gu had already gotten the advantage, he did not plan to let the shadow go. There was only one chance, so he had to make use of it carefully. When the weakened shadow heard what Chin Gu said, he was practically jumping from agitation. He tried to go and grab the doorknob again, and as a result, there was another nail poking out from his neck. It was too cruel. The shadow's face was blurry, so no one could tell his actual facial expression. After being scammed twice, he did not dare stay close to Chin Gu. As the one who lifted his curse, he could barely believe that he would be cornered to this point by his scapegoat. Blood was about to consume the art room. Everything would be swallowed by blood. The shadow waved his hands madly. If they stayed there any longer, there would be nothing of them left behind. You are a cunning, despicable, cruel, and scary ghost, and I am just a normal person. The gap between our power is too big. How do you expect me to trust you? I do not know the process of scapegoating, so I have no idea what the lightning of the palm print represents. Even if you have done something to my body, I cannot tell. Chen Gu could feel the change happening inside the art room. 
The strange paintings were slowly dyed red, and the inverted paintings were turning to normal. Blood covered everything. The two in the room were slowly pulled into the depth of the ocean by a mysterious force that they would find difficult to escape from. The shadow was unable to speak. He bounced up and down, waving his hands, his gestures, becoming bigger and bigger. You wish to say that you haven't lied to me? Chinga knew that they could not stay there for long. He leaned against the door and stood at the spot closest to the door, ready to rush out at any moment. Fine, I'll trust you this once, but I hope I can see your sincerity. The shadow grasped Chinji's meaning. He had a hard time believing that he would be scammed by his own scapegoat. You originally stayed inside room 413, so you should know a lot about Lin Cici. I need you to tell me about that, do not hide anything from me. Chenga spoke quickly. When the shadow heard that, he nodded swiftly. Then, he tried to walk forward, but Chen Go pulled out another nail from his pocket. There's another thing. You stay in the same bedroom as Lin Cici, so you should know about the password to his phone. That was one of the key items obtained by Chen Go, but he lacked the password, so he could not utilize it. The shadow's action paused. Just as he was about to express his thought, Chen Go added, Don't think about lying to me. I have his phone right here. Retrieving the phone from his phone, Chingu turned on the screen. Tell me. When he saw the phone, the shadow's reaction was slightly out of place. He stepped subconsciously backward and then started to gesture several numbers at Chingu. 51413? Chingu felt that the number was quite familiar. Whenever the shadow gestured a number, he immediately typed it in. After keying in all five numbers, the phone was finally unlocked. This is an important discovery. Memorizing the password, Chinga pushed open the door and left the art room. He was a man of his word, after he left, he did not close the door to stop the shadow from leaving. Only after the shadow slipped out did Chinji close the door. The blood inside the door poured and splashed everywhere and swallowed everything, but everything outside the door was normal, completely unaffected. Chinga believed that this strange phenomenon had everything to do with those strange paintings. I wonder who the painters are. There are 13 easels in total, so there should be 13 painters, but their themes and painting styles are so similar. Could it be that they have the same teacher? With one problem solved, several new problems rushed into his mind. Chinga stood where he was and was frowning in thought when he felt a chill coming from behind him. Turning back to look, the shadow was expanding, his expression was changing, and his body twisting. His fingers turned into animal claws. The anger that he had experienced when he was inside the art room was finally exploding. If you kill me, who is going to be your scapegoat? Chinga opened his arms, and he looked calmer than before. If I'm not mistaken, everyone at this school is looking for a scapegoat, and there are very few suitable candidates. Taking a confident step forward, Chin Go lifted his eyes to look at the scary face. After you got me to be your scapegoat, you immediately went into hiding. This proves that you're also afraid, afraid that after your success, you'll be targeted by other people, am I correct? The dark claws wrapped around Chin Ji's neck. The shadow's heart was filled with resentment, he seemed to be angry at what Chin Go had done to him earlier. I am your scapegoat, and you are the one who made it so. That is the strongest connection binding us together, and no one will be able to contest that. Chen Ji's expression gave people a warm feeling. He reached out to touch the shadow's hand but phased through the shadow. We are not only not enemies, but are allies with the strongest bond. Think about it. You cannot kill me, because if you did, you'll lose your scapegoat. I am just a normal person, so I won't survive in this school, and I might be ambushed by some unknown ghost at any moment. The only person whom I can trust and rely on is you because I know you won't kill me. The claw stopped right next to Chen Ji's neck. The shadow gave it some thought and felt like Chen Ji's words had some logic to them. However, he felt strange that there would exist such a peaceful relationship between him and his scapegoat. This school is filled with danger and everyone has their own agenda. 
Cooperation and trust are impossible, but we have worked through that, so we are the most suitable allies. Chen Go walked toward the shadow. Even if the scapegoating is completed, you cannot leave this school. Why don't we work together to find the exit? Looking at Chen Go, the shadow was beyond shocked. He had never encountered a situation like this before. I am in the open, and you're in the dark. If we work together, we'll definitely surprise many people. Chen Gu was completing an impossible thing. At least in this school, such an arrangement had not been attempted before. The shadow's body was returning to normal. He hesitated a long time before gesturing something with his fingers. You want to know why I'm not afraid of you? Chen Gu shook his head. I am not not afraid of you, I am so very scared, but I can put on a brave front. Let's stop wasting time. What else do you know about this Lin Cici? Chapter 783 The Wall, the Black Shadow, and Lin Cici shared the same bedroom, he even knew Lin Cici's phone password. This proved that they shared a more than casual relationship. I wish to know everything about Lin Cici. This is related to whether we can escape from this school or not. Chinga opened his lips to ask, but the shadow did not reply as if the name Lin Cici was this school's taboo and discussing it would bring about some bad luck. Slowly shaking his head, the shadow pointed at Chen Gu. He painted at the top of his head and then at the bottom of his feet. It was hard to tell what he was trying to express, are you trying to say that what we're discussing might be overheard by something else? Chen Gu tried to read the shadow's gesture. The shadow shook its head and then used his fingers to make out several words, we've killed Lin Cici. All of us are Lin Cici. All of us are Lin Cici? Chen Gu seemed to have understood something. He was about to ask another question when a faded stench drifted through the air. Something's coming. The shadow reacted faster than Chen Gu. It opened the door opposite and slipped through it. After it got into the room, the shadow did not close the door. Chen Gu grasped his intention immediately and followed him into the room. He even remembered to leave the door open for me. Looks like he's willing to cooperate now. Chen Gu had not lied even once in his words, at least, that was how he saw it. While the ghost needed a scapegoat, he had to be careful that his scapegoat was not stolen by another ghost. Likewise, the scapegoat needed to survive and thus could only pick the most trustworthy one among all the ghosts. How things would be resolved was a problem for the future. What Chinga needed now was to consider how to survive this night. He would make use of everything within his disposal and try his best to see another day. Just what is giving off the smell? Chinga stayed away from the door and hid behind the shadow. By then, the shadow had returned to normal. He looked very thin and at least one head smaller than Chingu. By having Chen Gu hide behind him, it made a strange scene indeed. The change to the art room has most likely affected the workers inside the lab. I saw a guard room on the second floor, and the red specter from there might want to take our lives due to the destruction we've wrought to the art room. Chen Gu analyzed the situation calmly. The shadow agreed with Chen Ji's reasoning, but he was curious. How did Chen Gu know that there was a red specter inside the guard room? This place is no longer safe. We need to leave this building and find another place to hide and discuss the next step of our plan. Chen Gu had achieved his goal of entering the lab. He did not wish to stay inside this dangerous locale one moment longer. Walking to the window, Chen Gu pulled back the curtain. It's a bit dangerous to climb down here. However, going back to the elevator was no different from asking for death. The window was the only option. After ensuring that Mr. Bai was not outside, Chen Gu jumped through the window and carefully grabbed onto the ledge. The cold draft lifted his hair. Chen Ji's back was soaked with sweat. I sure hope this is nothing but a nightmare. In that case, I'll be sure to wake up if I just jump down from here. Aiming at the machine of the air conditioner on the third floor, Chen Gu slowly adjusted his posture. If I miss, everything's over. Everything depends on this jump. Chen Gu took a deep breath, but just as he was about to let go, the black shadow appeared at the window. 
He stood next to the edge and glanced at Chen Ge hanging outside the window. If he pried open Chen Ji's fingers at that moment, he could easily kill Chen Ge. Follow me. We're going to leave this place together. Chen Ji's voice was filled with trust and concern. This made the shadow feel uncomfortable. In the end, he did not harm Chen Ge. Quick. Hanging in midair was very physically exhausting. After aiming for his landing spot, Chen Ge let go. Bang. Both of his feet landed firmly on top of the air conditioner's exposed machine. Chen Ge leaned forward to stick to the wall. That created too much noise. The monsters inside the building and Mr. Bai will definitely have heard that. I cannot hesitate any longer. Turning to look up at the fourth floor window, the shadow was still standing by the window. He appeared to have his own plan. You wish to hide some more? This school is a cage. No matter how long you hide, you will still be trapped. Cooperating with me is your only chance. We'll escape this place together. Stopping for less than a second, Chen Gu jumped down to the second floor air conditioner. He lifted his head again. The shadow was still standing on the fourth floor. Chen Gu had already obtained more than enough information from the shadow. Actually, the shadow was not that useful to Chen Gu. However, Chen Gu still hoped that the shadow would be able to leave with him. He needed a helper, and more than that, he needed a local from the school of the afterlife to be his guide. Wishing to turn his situation around, he had to gather enough strength, and this shadow was where Chen Gu placed his hope. I don't know anything about this school's rules, but I know that after consuming more than enough normal specters, even a normal specter can evolve into a red specter. Standing outside the second floor, Chen Gu stopped hesitating and screamed. If I'm captured and become another ghost scapegoat, you'll spend the rest of your life being pinned back on the wall. At the mention of his potential fate, the shadow started to hesitate. He stood on the edge and dipped downward. Chen Gu saw a shadow flit down the wall before falling into his own shadow. Are you okay? There was no response from his shadow. Chen Ji's heart was conflicted, but he soon regained his composure. He jumped down to ground and then ran toward the brush. There are monsters and ghosts inside every single building here, entering them means taking on a lot of risk. Chen Gu stayed in the brush motionlessly. About ten seconds later, Mr. Bike came out from the other side of the lab and stopped not far away from Chen Gu. He lifted his head and spotted the window on the fourth floor that was hanging open. His expression was twisted and scary, and he kept saying, bad student. Mr. Bike seemed to be afraid of this lab building as well. He did not dare enter it but merely walked around the perimeter and then left in a hurry. Chen Gu, who was in hiding, saw everything. When he could not hear Mr. Bai's footsteps anymore, he stood up. His eyes scanned the lab building and his body shivered. At the window that he had escaped from earlier, there was a person in red attire staring at him. The red specter from the guardroom has been trailing me, but it seems like he is unable to leave the lab. Chen Ji's heart was quivering under the red specter's stare, and he silently retreated. Where should I go next? Chen Gu desperately needed to find somewhere safe to rest. He looked through Lin Cici's phone and compiled the known clues to come up with the next step of his plan. He felt a pat on his shoulder. The thin shadow materialized behind Chen Gu. He pointed at the eastern side of the campus and gestured the following, the wall. Chapter 784, Life Coach, The Wall? Why would we go to somewhere like that? Earlier, the shadow had been granted many easy chances to kill Chen Gu, but he had not elected to do so. There was already a basic trust between the two. The shadow did not answer Chen Gu. He seemed to be hesitating over whether to lead Chen Gu there or not. The place that he had in mind was most likely a location that he was planning to use to hide. Feel free to deny me the answer if the question is too difficult. We are partners now and friends. There is no need to have so many concerns, Chen Gu said with an easy smile and natural tone. The shadow stood before Chen Gu alone. He was not tall and was on the thinner side. 
he looked quite fragile. Ever since he joined this school, this was the first time that someone had said such things to the shadow. He stood facing Chen Ge and did not hide himself for the first time. Introverted, shy, self-effacing, the shadow was different from his peers. There was no liveliness in him at all. It was as if many bad things had already stripped away his happiness before he even joined the school. Chen Ji's words remind the shadow of certain things. Most of his memories were gray, and whenever he was pulled down memory lane, the debris from the past would seep into his nostrils and ears. They were no longer painful, they merely dampened his spirits. Why are you spacing out? Let's get going. Staying in one place for long will cause bad things to happen. Chin Gu patted the shadow's shoulder, but his fingers phased through the shadow's body and fell on his chest. Chin Gu did not seem to mind it and seemed to have gotten used to this already. Taking a big stride forward, Chin Gu opened his back just like that to the shadow and did not put up any guard at all. Staring at Chin Ji's back, the shadow still had a hard time believing that he was cooperating with his scapegoat. Where is this wall that you mentioned? Chin Gu headed in the direction that the shadow had pointed in for about 10 minutes. He was no closer to seeing the edge of the school, this school was incredibly huge. The shadow kept urging Chen Gu to pick up his speed. The ghost and human flitted through the brush for a whole five minutes before Chen Gu realized that he had returned to the same spot that they had departed from. Are we going in circles? How come the trees around us seem to have changed? There are now more trees. It was untrue to say that Chen Gu was walking in circles because he had reached the eastern campus and he could see the tall buildings at the western campus. He and the shadow had been moving toward the western campus for a very long, but those buildings were still blurry like they were hiding behind a layer of fog. Are you sure we're going the right way? The shadow also realized that something was wrong. He stood behind one of the trees. His thin body wavered from the window like a leaf that would be blown apart at any moment. Brother, are you all right? The shadow seemed to have sensed something. He pulled back his arms, signaling for Chen Gu to retreat and stop walking ahead. There's a ghost around us? Is it very powerful? How powerful is it compared to you? Chen Gu asked a series of questions, but the shadow answered none of them. He moved his body backward, and at the same time, he ensured that Chen Gu was within two meters of himself. Looks like there is really something inside the brush. Chen Gu brushed the sweat from his forehead. Even the brush by the roadside was not safe anymore. He had a new understanding of this school. Hopefully, it's not a red specter or half-red specter. Just as Chen Gu and the shadow were slowly retreating, a different voice seemed to drift out from the deeper part of the trees. Save me. It sounded like the voice of a girl, and from the sound of it, she was less than ten years old. Someone is calling for help, does the voice sound familiar to you? Can you recognize her? Chen Gu sidled up to the shadow. At that moment, it was wise to stay together. The shadow shook his head softly and then pointed at Chen Ji's ears as if trying to remind Chen Gu to close his ears and not to listen to the girl's pleading. Save me, save me, will you save me? Even though he held his hands over his ears, the girl's voice echoed in Chen Ji's mind. The voice was getting clearer and clearer like the girl was getting closer. She sounds like she's in so such pain. Shall we go help her? Chen Gu took out the nail from his pocket and hid it inside his palm. The shadow was not privy to Chen Ji's intention. Why would he talk out a nail if he said he was going to help the girl? He shook his head naively and gestured, danger, run. As Chen Gu retreated, he asked, is she wearing bloody clothes or just normal clothes? The shadow had no idea what Chen Gu was up to but he answered honestly, normal clothes. If it's not a red specter, I think we have a need to go help her. Chen Gu stopped moving. He counted the nails in his pocket. A girl asking for help in the middle of the nowhere. She must be in deep trouble. How can we just ignore a plea like that? Save me, don't go, please, save me. The girl's voice sounded poor and weak, but at the same time, it was getting clearer. 
Chin Gu and the shadow were moving fast, but the girl was still able to catch up to them, which presented many problems. Did you hear that? This girl sounds so pitiful. If we can, we should help her. Carrying his bag, Chin Gu hit a nail each in both hands. The shadow saw that Chin Gu was about to go help the girl and panicked. He gestured wildly, repeating the same word, danger. I know that it might be dangerous, but with great risk comes great reward. Chin Gu not only did not run away, he headed toward the source of the voice. He walked deeper into the brush and yelled, Where are you? If you're injured, just stay there, and don't move. I'll be there to help you in a moment. Seeing as Chin Gu had answered the girl's plea for help, the shadow's body dissipated. He seemed to be gripped by both panic and fear. He wished to leave but had something that concerned him. In the end, he escaped back into Chin Ji's shadow. Certain things cannot be avoided. Even if there's only a minuscule chance that this girl is really injured, we need to go take a look. She only has us to rely on now. Many tragedies can be avoided with good Samaritans, Chin Gu claimed loudly, enough for nearby characters to hear him. Chin Gu stood where he was, and several seconds later, a pale arm poked through the bush. Save me, please don't go, save me. What happened to you? How can I help? Chen Ge asked. Yuan Ming has gone insane, he has really lost it. I wished to break up with him, and he threatened me with his death. Then, he asked me to meet him here, saying that he wished to have a little talk with me. We had an argument, and now he wants to kill me. He's coming soon. Save me, save me, okay? The girl's voice was very weak from the copious loss of blood. Even her breathing sounded heavy. There's another one? Chen Gu stood where he was. I'll call the police for you. Then I'll take you back to school to find the staff. Okay, thank you, I cannot crawl anymore. Can you come over to pull me up? The girl asked through her tears. Sure. Chen Gu hid the nails in his palms and slowly walked close to the pale arm. He was about to extend his hands when the arm grabbed at Chen Ji's palm. It was a broken arm. The arm was not connected to anything. Help me. Help me. Dig the rest of me out from the ground. Chapter 785 We're not taking advantage of her the girl's voice suddenly turned shrill, and the broken arm shot forward like a python that was striking its prey. It flew to grab Chen Gu. Don't worry. Chen Gu tightened his fists, and the nails poked through the gaps. He targeted the hand that shot at him and hit it heavily. I'm so cold. I'm just underneath your feet. Save me. Save. A.H. The girl's harrowing howl was interrupted by a scream. Are you all right? Chin Gu looked at the broken arm that fell next to him. The hand was very beautiful with tapered fingers, fair fingers, but the back of the hand had been pierced through by a nail, pinning it to the ground. Where are you buried? I saw a severed hand earlier, is it yours? Chen Gu unclenched his palms, which were covered in sweat. Actually, he had been given quite a fright. Thankfully, he had been well prepared to face this situation. The begging ceased, and only a shrill female cursing voice remained. Is it that painful? I've been pricked a few times myself, and it doesn't feel so bad. Chin Gu looked around carefully as he slowly retreated. If there was a broken hand inside the brush, there was no guarantee that there was nothing else. The girl's voice became clearer, and Chin Ji's ears twitched. With the talent of Ghost Ear, his hearing was better than most. He could hear the mumbling of Ghost, and that effect came in handy at this moment. It's on my left. Chin Gu reached into pocket and grabbed another nail. He ensured that the weapon was close by. The arm that was pinned to the ground was still flailing about. The girl was incensed, and she stopped disguising her voice. Chin Gu moved to the left, and suddenly, he felt something give underneath his feet. It was very soft. Not good. As the thought crossed his mind, Chin Ji's body already reacted. 
He quickly jumped back, but a mysterious power pulled on his calf, preventing him from leaving. Didn't you want to save me? Why are you leaving? I'm buried here, the plot of land that you've just stepped on. Pain and hatred turned the girl's voice ugly. Chen Gu ignored the girl and turned his head down to look. His calf was being grabbed by another broken arm. And worse than that, he realized that there was something wrong with this whole plot of land. It felt like a muddy bog, and his body would sink if he stayed there for too long. When he saw that hand, Chen Gu reacted swiftly. He held the nail and pushed it deep into the girl's hand. The curse in room 413 seemed to be very powerful, and a single nail proved to be so damaging. No wonder it's the room for Lin Cici. There are probably some other treasures hidden inside that bedroom. The scary curse turned into something useful in Chen Ji's arms. Even the shadow in hiding was shocked by his response. I feel sorry for what has happened to you, and I do wish to help you, but what do you plan to do to me in return? Chen Gu pushed the nail deeper into the other broken arm before swiftly retreating. Didn't you say you'd save me? My body is just buried here. Dig me up and help me escape. The girl's voice echoed in his ears. Chen Gu turned back to look, and three meters away from him, there was a hole in a tree. Inside the dark enclosure sat a scary female human skull. The hair was tattered, and the eyes that had no pupils were yanked open as they stared at Chen Gu. Liar. You didn't intend to help me at all. You're all liars. I really did wish to help you, that's undeniable, but you refused to communicate nicely with me. Why did you try to grab me? When Chen Gu saw the girl, his hands reached subconsciously into his pocket. The girl had died a horrible death, and he might not have enough nails to deal with her. Chen Gu had a love-hate relationship with these nails that he pulled out from his body. With the addition of each new nail, it meant that he was that much closer to death but at the same time, it was because of these nails that he could compete against the girl and the shadow. Stop lying to me. That was what the man said. But in the end, this is what they did to me. Go to hell. Go to hell all of you. The skull was sitting snugly inside the treehouse. With the screaming from the girl, the surroundings started to change again. The air seemed to freeze, and the leaves rustled noisily. Soon, strands of hair floated down from between the branches, and things that looked like blood vessels surfaced on the ground. It looked quite scary. She seems to have joined with this plot of land after being buried here for so long. The situation had changed to go out Chin Ji's control. He started to retreat. Didn't you say you'd save me? Why are you leaving? Is it because I look so ugly? Didn't you promise that you'd love me no matter what happened to me? Now that I've become something like this, why are you turning away? Come back and accompany me. I'm so cold here alone. Come stay with me, I've missed you so much, the girl screamed madly. She seemed to have treated Chin Gu as Yuan Ming, and the face inside the tree hole had morphed into something inhumane. She has to be in so much pain now, but I cannot communicate with her at all and I can't do anything to help her. Oh well, perhaps I can figure out a method to make her forget this horrible memory. Chen Gu turned to look at his shadow. If her spirit lingers, her pain will never end. We can't just allow this to carry on. The head inside the tree hole should be her real form. Can you help me detain her? The shadow did not imagine that, in just a few seconds, the situation would deteriorate to such a stage. He looked at the two arms that were pinned on the ground, and he could not imagine how Chin Gu was going to save this girl. Brother, don't just reply me with silence. As long as you can detain the head, we have a chance. Hearing Chin Gu, the shadow shook his head in panic. He was afraid. Even though the girl was not a red specter, it did not mean that she was easily bullied. You need to have faith in yourself. No matter what happens, you have to trust yourself. This is strength from the bottom of your heart. The shadow had a soft personality. He had been through too many things when he was still alive. Chen Gu yelled loudly, trying to resolve the lock in the shadow's heart. 
I am your scapegoat, so I won't harm you. This girl is the first hurdle that we've encountered as a team. We have to overcome it so that our path in the future will be smooth. Chen Gu spoke very fast, and he did end up convincing the shadow. The thin shadow appeared behind Chen Gu. His body swayed with the wind and looked like he would disperse at any moment. Don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Think about your past. You do not wish for the tragedy to occur again. You cannot allow yourself to continue being like this. The shadow gradually grew. With the encouragement from Chen Gu, the shadow grew to twice his size. The hands turned into claws, and the resentment around him thickened. Yes. Anger, pain, and despair are your power. Go ahead. This hurdle before us is not the enemy, it is just a soft fruit. Make her a part of you, carry her spirit with you. That way, you won't only have saved her, you'll end up saving yourself. Chen Ji's voice was low and hoarse, like the murmuring of the devil. Chapter 786 Much to learn Chen Ji's voice seemed to possess some kind of magical power, and words became a weapon even sharper than a knife. In the dark forest, the air stilled to the point that it formed a suffocating barrier, strands of black hair dangled down from the treetop, and the blood vessels on the ground weaved together. Based on some unique rules, when the skull in the tree hole spotted the shadow, a flash of confusion crossed her eyes that were pupil-less. Don't hesitate. Any hesitation is a waste of time that we can use to escape. Do you wish to cancel out our hope with your own hands? Holding the nails with both hands, Chen Gu stood behind the shadow. No matter what happens, I'll face it with you. The shadow, which was originally smaller than Chen Gu, was now three meters tall. The resentment and hatred gathered in his heart was evoked by Chen Gu. His hands morphed into claws, and a beast-like roar escaped from his throat. This shadow that had been pinned to room 413 possessed huge potential. In fact, his potential was far greater than Chen Gu imagined, which caused him to become more curious about the shadow's past. Everyone has hope, but to turn that hope into reality, it depends not on charity, but everything you've got. Only by giving it your all might there be a chance. Chen Gu pointed at the skull inside the tree hole. And that is our hope. The shadow body was continually expanding, and when Chen Gu said that, the shadow's face cracked, causing many thin black lines to surface on his body. Then, the shadow charged forward. The girl's scream filled the brush again. The decayed muscles that littered the ground carried an indescribable stench with them, and they tried to stop the shadow. At the same time, the black hair from the branches seemed to gain a life of their own as they curled toward Chen Gu. Coming at the two of us at once? From his many experiences of being chased by ghosts, Chen Ji's body was very agile. This was a valuable skill that he had obtained. The girl can influence the neighboring grounds. If we don't deal with her, it'll be very hard to leave this place. Chen Gu had no idea what was behind him walking in circles, and he could not fix it. Therefore, he could only try to solve the problem from its basis. The battle between ghosts was extremely violent, and most of the time, it would only stop once one party was torn to pieces. After the shadow expanded, he was stronger than before, but he lacked fighting experience and was not as mad and as crazed as Suin, so he soon was tripped by the girl. This guy has great potential, but he's too weak now. Chinga knew that once the shadow was defeated, he would not survive on his own. Veins pulsed on his arms as he grabbed the bag and lobbed it as forceful as he could at the tree hole. Before the bag reached its target, it was stopped by the net of hair that dropped from the treetop. However, that was enough to buy time for Chen Gu. He grabbed the nail and ran toward the tree hole, from another direction I can't stop. The ground here is soaked with her blood. I'll die if I slow down. Ignoring the fear before his eyes, Chen Gu pushed forward with a powerful will. Compared to the shadow, he appeared more crazed. Soon, the pain will be over. Soon, you will not be in the torment of pain and loneliness anymore. Chen Gu did not think about retreating, and he moved very fast. 
The girl sensed the threat from Chen Ge and pulled out part of her energy to stop him. The grass wilted at an incredible speed to expose a human skin like ground. Since you're unwilling to save me, then get buried here alongside my body. Gashes opened on the ground, which looked like interconnecting wounds. The temperature dropped as something crawled out from the gaps. Chinga felt both pain and numbness coming from his calves. He slowly lost feeling in his feet. The thing that had crawled out from the gaps earlier seemed to be various insects. He did not stop to take a look. He was temporarily ignoring anything that might slow him down. At that moment, the only thing in his eyes was the skull inside the tree hole. I know you're in great pain, but why unload your anger on innocent people? You aren't going after those that harmed you, but trying to threaten us innocent passers-by, isn't that a bit too much? Chen Gu yelled loudly. He was not afraid of exposing his location. The most urgent matter was to undo the walking loop and killing this female ghost that he could communicate with. Even though he was losing control of his legs, he pushed himself forward. The girl exhausted a lot of energy to deal with Chen Gu. The shadow made use of this opportunity to escape from her grasp and instantly reached the space next to the tree hole. He reached his sharp claws inside the hole. Following Chen Ji's order, the shadow tried to grab the skull out of the hole, but once he tried to issue force, the girl's skull issued a horrifying scream. As the skull was yanked out, Chen Gu and the shadow realized that underneath the skull hid innumerable blood vessels that looked like plant fibers. What kind of monster is this? This was the first time that Chen Gu had encountered a creature like this, but he reacted faster than the shadow. Chop off the vessels, connecting to her head. Quick. The girl's eyes were white. The blood vessels under her neck were connected to the trees. The ground was slowly sinking like it was planning to swallow the shadow. Quick. Cut it off. Chen Gu yelled at the top of his lungs. It was not looking so good for the shadow. He did not cut off the girl's blood vessels, and his body was slowly being entwined by them. Why are you hesitating? With the ground sinking, Chen Gu was unable to turn and run away. Instead, he used the last ounce of his energy to pounce at the girl's skull. He did something crazy. His body rammed into the net made of the blood vessels and pierced the nails into the girl's eyes at a close distance. Quick. Now. The eyes were poked through. The girl was on a complete rampage. The bloody net was closing in on Chen Gu and the shadow. We don't have much time. At the last moment, the shadow made his first step toward transformation. His body turned illusory, but the two claws materialized physically. The shadow gathered all of his strength as he pierced his hands through the girl's skull. Blood splattered everywhere, and a piercing scream cut through the night sky. The fog around them slowly lightened. The shadow exploded at the last moment, and his spectral nature compelled him to do many things that he had not done before. The night breeze blew. The shadow's body was returning to normal. He lifted his thin, weak arms. In the middle of his palms was a red heart yanked out from the deepest part of the tree hole. You've done a great job. We've passed the first hurdle. Chingu looked at the shadow with a smile. He was currently lying in the mud. There were many scratches on his body. The worms that had crawled from the ground earlier were not real worms, but coagulations of the girl's resentment. Before you consume this heart, I have one last question to ask you. Chen Gu forced himself to stand up. I wonder if you've experienced this before. How long will you hibernate after you consume something like this? After a specter consumed another specter's essence, they would go into hibernation. The period of hibernation was related to the consumer's and the consumed's power level. The shadow had no idea what Chen Gu was talking about. He was too eager to eat the heart he was holding. Looks like you really don't know anything. Don't worry, I can teach you slowly, Chen Gu said with a smile and signaled for the shadow to leave the brush. Chapter 787, Instinct and Beyond Instinct, the shadow was very weak. He would avoid a half-red specter, much less a red specter. 
To put it plainly, he was at the bottom of the pyramid at this school. He had forever been pinned to the wall, unable to move, unable to speak, just a stain on the wall. Indeed, compared to the other monsters at the school, the shadow was just like a small stain. No one would give him any thought, and no one would have faith in him, least of them all himself. We've made too loud a commotion, we need to leave this place immediately. Chingu went forth, to remind the shadow, since the latter was still standing there. The shadow was like an orphan, who had seen his parents, for the first time. There was a bestial element to his nature, but he did not know how to get used to it. There will come a day for every mammal, to be weaned, from its mother's teat. If you don't eat others, you'll end up being eaten by others. Chingu patted the shadow's shoulder. His hand once again phased through the shadow and fell on his chest. No one is willing to grow up, but you have to understand that you cannot stay a child. These words were meaningful to the shadow. The latter's body shook. His hands held the heart that looked like a red ruby before swallowing it whole. Hey! At that moment, the shadow seemed to lose his rationality. His spectral nature compelled him to consume the heart. This is bad. That girl should be slightly more powerful than the shadow. He will go into hibernation since he has just consumed the heart of a ghost who is more powerful than he is. Chinga knew about the shadow's potential, but even with that unique potential, he was not going to be more powerful than Zhang Ye. After Zhang Ye consumed a red specter, even she had to go into hibernation. There was no exception. Why are you acting so recklessly? Chinga had just found himself a helper and now said helper was going into hibernation. This gave H.M. quite a headache. His original plan had been to split the red heart into several parts so that the shadow would still grow but not go into hibernation. Just by swallowing the heart, the shadow's size doubled. He held his head in both of his hands. He pulled on his lips and face madly like he was trying to tear his face apart. Chingu could see that the shadow was in great pain, but he did not know how to help him. Calm down. If you really cannot consume the other party, accept her, accept her power and carry out her dying wish, help her complete her dying hope. Chengu yelled loudly. The shadow finally reacted. He walked to the tree hole, squatted down, and reached both of his hands into the hole like he was looking for something. Something is not right. Even for Zhang Ye, when she consumed a specter from the same level, she entered hibernation in a very short time. This guy has held on for so long. Is it because of his own uniqueness, or are the ghosts at this school different from the ghosts outside? The shadow dug for a long time before retrieving a rusted knife from inside the tree hole. Is this the weapon that killed the girl? Has her spirit been lingering on this murder weapon? Normally, a specter's item of possession was related to the item important to their life. The girl's item of possession was most likely the weapon that had killed her, which also meant that the driving force to her lingering after her death was revenge. The shadow's body doubled in size. He held the knife and stood before Chen Go. The twisted arms waved up and down like he was trying to say something. Several seconds later, the shadow crawled into Chen Ji's shadow and the knife fell before him. Does he wish for me to go look for the killer? Chen Ji's lips pulled upward. He picked up the knife. He was in the same camp as the shadow, so he would help whenever he could. To go to such an extent for being a scapegoat, I don't think anyone would have done this. The knife was covered in rust and dirt, but it felt quite heavy in Chen Ji's grasp. Could it be that the nature of the knife has changed since the girl has possessed it for so long? After placing the knife in the folds of his clothes, Chingu inspected the surrounding again. The signs of battle were obvious in the brush. There was no way to hide them, so Chingu decided to make use of it to misdirect people who might be on their trail. After wasting so much time here, it's about time we leave. There was danger hiding in every corner of this school. All Chingu could do then was trust in the shadow and find the location that the shadow had mentioned, the wall. Turning back to look at his shadow, Chin Gu could feel the increasing chilling air that radiated from it. He'll become stronger after consuming another specter, but this school appears to have a rule of its own. 
All the ghosts that I've encountered limited their nature, quite unusual. Chinga thought back to his experience in Liwan City. The 3.5 star scenario had a lot of specters, but there were few instances where the specters went after each other because each specter had their own territory and their area of movement was limited. This was completely different from this school. Most of the specters could move freely and go to any corner of the school. Someone at this school has accomplished something that the ghost fetus at the pinnacle of Red Spectre was unable to do. Chen Gu sucked in a cold breath. He was even more certain that there was something greater than a Red Spectre at the school. How am I supposed to face something even scarier than Zhongya? Chen Gu quickly suppressed the burgeoning sense of despair. The black phone wouldn't have given me an impossible mission. There has to be a way out. A three-star scenario was different from a four-star scenario, just like how a red specter was different from a greater red specter. However, Chin Gu was unfamiliar with the exact differences. In any case, the encounters that he had experienced tipped him off to certain things. Red specters were tied to the instinct and nature that they carried from when they were alive, but greater red specters seemed to have broken through that limitation. For example, the twelve painters in the art room and the bloody oil paintings that were hard to understand. They seemed to be collectively expressing something, and that something was already beyond Shin Ji's comprehension. Different from knowing the ghost fetus identity, there should be something that I can do to deal with the owner of this school. The ghost fetus harbored deep resentment toward Chin Gu, and it could not wait to torture Chin Gu. Conversely, the owner of this school did not seem to have much personal history with Chen Gu. I should take it slow, my most immediate concern is to survive. Chen Gu picked up his speed. As he ran, he took out Lin Cici's phone. He keyed in the password and finally unlocked the phone. After the red specter at the lab saw me leave the building, it stopped chasing me. From that, it shows that even red specters are unable to violate the rules of this school. What I need to do now is figure out the rules here and make use of the rules to increase the chance of my own survival. Lowering his head to glance at the phone, he only took a glimpse at it, and Chen Gu was unable to pull his gaze away again. Lin Cici's phone background was that of an oil painting. It featured a human face that was featureless. Chapter 788 phone number and the clue of the killer is this Lin C.C. self-portrait? But why didn't he paint in his own features? Chin Gu stared at the faceless head in the phone, and the longer he stared at it, the more confused he became. Gradually, it felt like he was staring at his own face. Shouldn't the phone's background keep changing? Whenever there's a new Lin C.C., would the human face change again? This phone was a treasure for Chin Gu. He had too many things that he needed to understand. Moving his fingers, Chin Gu first clicked open the photo album. The camera functions normally, but the videos or photos inside this phone are quite strange. Chin Gu looked for a long time before he found the problem. There was no human presence inside the videos and photos, they were all about the scenery. Have the pictures with people in them been deleted? Or could the people at this school not be captured by the phone at all? Chen Gu very bravely conducted an experiment on himself. He raised the phone and took a selfie. The phone was so old that it did not have a front camera, and the picture taken was very blurry. Chen Gu glanced at it. Initially, he did not notice anything, but later on, his eyes started to narrow. There was not only Chen Gu in the picture taken, there was also the shadow behind him. The strangest thing was inside the picture. Chin Ji's shadow was thin and defenseless. He was hugging his knees, curling his body together. This phone can capture the shadow from room 413? This phone can capture ghosts with its lens? Chin Gu suddenly understood why there had not been any people inside the phone's saved photos. All the pictures that had people in them have been deleted, but I have no idea whether it was Lin Cici or someone else who did so. The phone had been tweaked before, but it did not dampen Chen Ji's mood. He found another thing worth noticing about the phone. The shadow in the picture retained his most original phone. 
In other words, Lin Cece's phone most likely possessed the ability to see through the ghost's disguise and recover their most original form. With this phone, I can avoid many dangers and have a glance of the ghost's real image beforehand. Plus, I can use this to come up with many special plans. Chinga felt like his luck had turned much better after he encountered the shadow. He took a few more pictures of himself. After confirming his hypothesis, he deleted all the pictures and returned the phone to its original state. Lin Cece's phone was very old. Other than the camera function, it only had a few other basic features. Chin Ge then looked at the phone book. There was only one contact inside, home. Opening the recent calls, it showed that there were only records for calls made in the last 24 hours. It was worth noting that in the past 24 hours, someone had used this phone to call two unknown numbers several times. The last call was made right before Chin Gu awakened in this school. Such consistent calls means that Lin Cici should have noticed something already. He kept calling these two numbers because their owners might have been able to aid him. Chin Gu was now Lin Cici in everyone's eyes. He thought about it before calling the first number. It rang for a long time, but there was no answer. Why isn't anyone answering? Chen Ge anxious. The other person did not end the call and did not pick up the call, allowing it to ring. Did the person not take their phone with them, or are they also considering whether to answer the call or not? After it continued to ring for a while, Chen Ge ended the call, and he tried the second number. The busy tone pulled on Chen Ji's nerves. Several seconds later, something surprising happened. Following a light click, the second call was connected. The other person answered the call, but no one spoke. Chin Ge patiently waited for the person on the other end of the line. He listened to the background noises, hoping to triangulate the other person's location, but unfortunately, the other line was exceptionally quiet like a morgue at midnight. Hello? The phone had limited power. Chen Ge did not dare waste more time, so he spoke first. I know you're listening. First, I don't mean any harm. If now is not a suitable time, it's fine. I just have some questions, and you only need to make some sound when my predictions are wrong. His own echo came from the other end. The other person still did not intend to speak. Do you know Lin Cici? Almost as soon as Chen Ge said the name Lin Cici, the call was cut off. Chen Ge did not even have time to react to it. They hung up on me? But this proves that there's something wrong with them if they hung up with such certainty after hearing the name Lin Cici. Chen Ge called again, and this time, it only rang once before the call was ended. How about we try texting then? Chen Ge soon abandoned this thought. Speaking was bidirectional. While exposing himself, he would obtain information about the other, but messaging was one-directional. The more he spoke, the more he would reveal about his own secrets. For the sake of security, Chin Gu temporarily abandoned the plan of messaging. He moved his fingers as he called the number for home. When he keyed in all the numbers, a boy's voice announced on the phone, I'm sorry, but the number you're calling is not available. The number was supposed to be home, but the number led to an empty number. Chin Gu tried it a few more times, and the result was all the same. Looks like this number is really cut off, his home is already gone. Chin Gu memorized the three phone numbers and left the brush in the direction given by the shadow. The eerie streetlights glowed weakly on him, pulling his shadow long. But upon closer inspection, he discovered that his shadow was wiggling like it was slowly growing. The shadow only needed a short amount of time to digest the girl at least ten times faster than my experience outside the door. Is this his talent, or is this common to all the ghosts inside this door? The shadow had digested the other specter so fast that it gave Chen Gu a confidence boost to his plan. However, he did not get ahead of himself. Even with such a quick digestion speed, the rules of this school are so well maintained, which goes to show how powerful the owner here is. Chen Gu was unsure of the other rules at this school but consuming other specters had to be something that violated the rules. When I just woke up, Mr. Bai was taking a roll call inside the classroom. 
At the time, my deskmate seemed to remind me that there have been students going missing from the school. The missing students might have been consumed by others, and most ghosts go into hibernation after consuming others, so how did the killers escape detection? Widening his eyes, Chinga suddenly was struck by a possibility. Could it be that the killer that the school is looking for is hiding among the missing students? He might be the first student to have gone missing. Hypothesizing based on this clue, a flash of brilliance appeared in Chin Ji's eyes. There is a greater red specter at this school. The locals here mostly follow the school rules, and only those who came from outside like me will go against the rules fearlessly. Does this mean that the killer that the school is looking for might be Chang Gu, who arrived here earlier than me? Chapter 789, Window Assuming that the person who pushed open the door inside the sick room was Chang Gu, then where did he go after entering the door? Chin Gu knew practically nothing about this world behind the door. The experience that he had obtained from previous three-star scenarios was completely useless here, but Chang Gu was different. The man had spent years studying this specific door, and he even possessed the left eye that Chang Wenyu had taken from the school of the afterlife. The eye could see things that normal people could not, and possessing it was no different from possessing a cheat. Chang Wenyu is Chang Gu's little sister. Her physical body became a vessel for scapegoats. That means that her soul should still be somewhere in this school. She won't allow anything bad to happen to her own big brother. If this current mission's difficulty could be categorized into different stages, then Chang Gu was playing the extremely difficult version while Chen Gu was playing the hellish difficulty version. Chen Gu started the game with nothing. When he opened his eyes, he was already in the middle of a dangerous conundrum. He had to survive without any aid, and there was not one single person whom he could trust around him. Under these circumstances, Chen Gu somehow managed to carve a way out for himself. If I can meet up with Chang Gu, his aid will mean my aid, and we will be able to look after each other. Even though Chang Gu had bad eyesight, he was a very clever man. He was good at hiding and was much more capable than he made himself out to be. After the shadow wakes up, I'll go look for the list of the victims. I'll observe Chang Gu from the dark before deciding what to do. Never one to put all of his eggs in one basket, after finding Chang Gu, Chin Gu planned to work with him, with one in the open and the other in the dark. If this killer really is Chang Gu, then I can make use of this opportunity to put everything onto him and clear my name. I'll come out to help him at the most crucial moment. The school probably won't expect there to be two killers. Chin Gu actually had another plan in his heart. To confuse the school, having only two killers isn't enough, I need help from more ghosts. When there are more than a handful of killers, the school rules will be completely broken, and then I will have a chance to submerge myself in the muddy waters. In any case, those were merely Chin Ji's temporary thoughts. It was hard to put this plan into action. There were greater red specters at the school, and Chin Gu could barely imagine just how scary those monsters were. When the other ghosts are summoned, I should try to make myself scarce. Perhaps there's a way that I can provoke them remotely. His plan was slowly moving into completion in his head. Chinga reached the end of the road without really realizing it. Before him was a long wall. The paint on the wall was peeling, and it was covered with vines. The night breeze blew, and the leaves rustled lightly. They looked like many small hands waving at Chinga. This wall is only three meters tall, and there is no visible support anywhere. I'll have a hard time jumping over it. Why would the shadow tell me to come here? The wall was adjacent to a brush, so Chin Gu did not need to worry about being exposed. However, his experience told him that staying in one spot for too long would only lead to bad things. Chin Gu reached his hands toward the wall. The leaves of the vines brushed against the back of his arms. The sensation was weird, like children biting him with their small teeth. This wall looks normal. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Chen Gu did not dare stay there for long. He kept turning back to look at his own shadow. The shadow's body was changing at every minute. He was in the middle of a metamorphosis and showed no sign of reawakening anytime soon. 
It's ironic that a scapegoat has started to get worried about the ghost that placed the curse on me. The shadow had only told Chen Gu to come to the wall, but he did not tell him what to do when he reached the wall. There is no sign of blood or a chilling presence. This place feels no different from the surrounding wall of a normal night school. The wall looked too normal, so normal that it felt incongruous with the rest of the school. Chen Gu took another few steps forward before suddenly stopping. He pushed away the plants that covered the wall and stuck his ear to the wall. There is sound coming from the other side of the wall. It sounds like students talking. Due to the distance, Chen Gu could not clearly hear the content. Even from the distance, I can still catch some clues. This means that there is a large number of speakers. Chen Gu tried to triangulate the location. The other side of the wall was Zhejiang Private University for undergraduates. Why is there a need for a wall to separate the eastern and western campuses? The eastern campus is scary enough. Don't tell me that the western campus is even scarier. Chen Gu leaned against the wall to listen. He could not sense anything that was wrong. Did the shadow want me to head toward the western campus? The shadow had no reason to harm Chen Gu, and Chen Gu also trusted the shadow implicitly, but it was too difficult for him to cross the wall. Thus, Chen Gu moved down the wall. He walked for several minutes before he spotted a squat two-story building. The house was not big and was built into the wall. The door was left half open like someone had been inside the building moments earlier. Once he got near, Chen Gu smelled a horrible stench in the air. This stench was different from the stench that Chen Gu had smelled at the lab. It was not a simple smell of decay, but it was a mixture of several horrible stenches. If I climb up to this building's roof, I'll be high enough to just jump over the wall. Chen Gu stood outside the building and resisted the urge to vomit. He took out Lin Cici's phone. This phone can capture ghosts and monsters, I might as well try to use it now. Switching on the phone, Chen Gu discovered with some shock that the face on the background was slowly becoming more and more like his. This portrait is changing? Shaking his head, Chen Gu clicked open the camera. He lifted the phone and aimed it at the small building and its surrounding. Everything looked normal. The stench here is different from the one at the lab. It shouldn't be those upside-down monsters. Shall I go in to take a look? Chen Gu leveled several glances at the small building. The building had an exposed wall, and there was no window on the first floor. The only place to support his body was the window on the second floor. This building only has one window? If Chen Gu was to use the building to leap over the wall, he had to first enter the building and then climb out through the second floor window and up to the roof. There are things here that are not visible with my Yin Yang vision, but Lin Cici's phone should be able to capture their presence. If not for the fact that the phone accidentally captured things that it shouldn't have, the pictures inside it wouldn't have been tampered with. Chen Ge finally made a decision. He walked up to the building and pushed open the door. The door creaked noisily. Chen Ge entered the room and saw the floor that was littered with trash. There was everyday trash and wrappings for various medicine, as well as balls of black plastic bags that appeared to be leaking blood. Is this building used as some kind of disposal center? Chen Gu held the phone and did not let his guard down. With every step, he stopped to take a picture of his surroundings. Chapter 790 Trash Collection Center Trash at a public institute like a school was normally centrally gathered before being moved out of the school in trash trucks. Therefore, this building was likely used as some kind of center for the collection of trash at Jiujiang Private University. The trash from the entire school was pooled there before being moved out of the compound. This building is placed between the two campuses. Does this mean that the two campuses share the same trash collection center? Chen Gu used the phone to look around and discovered several strange locations. There were eight cubicles inside the small building, and each cubicle had a wooden plaque hanging over it on which different terms were written. The first cubicle was categorized for paper-based trash. White paper, brown paper, and paper cups and plates littered the door. The second cubicle was for plastic trash. 
abandoned plastic mineral water bottles were left on the ground. The third cubicle had the term metal on the plaque, and the fourth was for aluminum. So far everything appeared normal. However, from the fifth cubicle onward, things started to get strange. The wooden plaque on the fifth cubicle had the following written on it. Human. Human is a kind of trash here? The door of the fifth cubicle was not locked, so Chinga pushed it open to take a look. Creek. Various deformed humans hung like dried meat inside the small cubicle. Their feet were tied, and that was how they were dangled from the ceiling with their heads facing downward, their heads swaying lightly in the wind. Chenga drew in a cold breath. There were at least thirty humans inside the narrow space. These should be mannequins, right? Raising the phone, Chinga took a few pictures of the hanging men. The pictures showed nothing more than what he could see with his bare eyes. Wiping away the sweat from his palm, Chinga raised his hand to touch those hanging humans. The sensation that came from his fingertips did not feel like that of rubber. It was not the sensation from touching a dead person's skin either. It felt more like he was touching a living person. The skin was warm, the pores were breathing, and the blood under the skin was still flowing. They're similar to living humans, but it feels like they've all lost their souls. Taking one step back, Chin Gu studied the hanging men. Their eyes were closed like they were fast asleep. Perhaps I should stay away from them. Chin Gu was about to leave when he noticed that one of the humans had the same physical appearance as the shadow from room 413. It was 1.6 meters tall, on the thin side, and had practically no muscle on it. It looked more like a skeleton with human skin sewn over it. This looks very similar to the shadow. Is this why the shadow told me to come here? Chin Gu was not 100% sure that the human inside the cubicle belonged to the shadow. There was not much walking space inside the cubicle, and there were too many obstacles in the way for him to get a good look. Temporarily, I should ignore this. I should try and see if I can leap over the wall first. If I can, then my explorable space will have increased. Walking out of the fifth cubicle, Chin Gu turned to look at the other cubicles. The sixth cubicle was for experimental trash. The door was locked, and Chen Gu could not open it. The seventh cubicle was for non-recyclable trash. Once he got near, Chin Gu was assaulted by a suffocating stench. This is horrible. The door of the seventh cubicle was also locked. Chin Gu quickly walked past the door and was heading to the last cubicle, but when he passed the door, a male voice suddenly came from inside the door. Is someone out there? Chin Gu froze immediately. He turned his head slowly around to stare at the door of the seventh cubicle. He definitely did not expect a human voice to come from a room meant for non-recyclable trash. I hear footsteps. You're now just outside this door, aren't you? I am the manager of the trash classification center, can you please open the door for me? When I came in here to move the trash, something slammed the door shut, and I found myself accidentally trapped in here. I'm locked inside the center storage room. The man's voice sounded normal but there were many suspicious points in his explanation. The cubicle door could only be opened from the outside, and an iron lock hung on the door. No matter how one knocked into the door, the lock would not have locked itself. I know that you're out there. Can you please help me? The spare keys should be on the second floor. The man continued to yell out the door, but Chen Gu did not reply. After half a minute, the man appeared to have given up. Is there really no one there? I thought I could trick them in here and then snack on them little by little. The smell in this room is getting more fragrant by the day. What do you think? He should be still out there. I'll bet ten fingers. He probably overheard our conversation. He won't come in to save us. Give up already, you bunch of ugly, dirty, disgusting things. I'm wondering if we should go out the back door and drag the person in here to join us. They probably don't realize that we can leave this place freely, right? That's a secret that we've kept to ourselves. Don't expose everything for some temporary joy. But he already heard our secret. 
how about we kill him? What do you think? Killing him will still get us exposed, you idiots. Last time, I shoved so many brains inside your skulls, so how come you're all still so stupid? Listening to the heated argument coming from inside the cubicle, Chin Ji's face was turning white. Inside the cubicle meant for non-recyclable trash, only a man's voice could be heard, but he seemed to be playing different characters. It sounded like he suffered from schizophrenia, but unlike other patients, every single persona of this person was extremely mad, crazy, and sick, none of them could think or act like a normal person. The people here have been completely influenced by the negative emotions. Even inside the world behind the door, I haven't met someone so crazy. Chingu immediately left. He glanced at the eighth cubicle. This cubicle was situated at the deepest part of the building. The wooden plaque on the door was blank. The space around the door was very clean. It did not look like it was meant for trash at all. Such a scary school. Even a trash collection center can give me such creeps. Walking past the black plastic bags that were still seeping blood, Chin Gook grabbed the phone to go to the second floor. Some tools could be found there, and overall, it was cleaner than the first floor. Chin Gook did not stop to admire the view and headed for the only window of the building. The window faced the night school, and various stains dirted the glass. Standing inside the building, one could barely see outside. The monster inside Cubicle 7 could come out at any moment. Whether he was lying or not, I cannot stay here any longer. Though, I should keep note of this place, perhaps I'll think of a use for it in the future. As Chinga reached toward the window, before he could open it, a screeching sound arrived at his ears. It sounded like someone was using their nails to scratch at the glass. Chapter 791, Eastern Campus and Western Campus Chen Gu stared at the window before him closely. The glass was heavily stained, and it was unclear when it had last been given a good wipe. The sound appears to have come from outside the window. Is something hanging on the wall? An image of a strange creature with very long nails appeared in Chen Ji's mind. It was stuck to the wall from outside, and once Chen Gu opened the window, it would leap into the room. He had encountered way too many strange things at this school, so no matter what kind of monster appeared, he would no longer be surprised. The stains on the window are blackish-red in color, and they all run in lines. They appear to be formed from being continually scratched by bloody hands. The scratching sound of nails against glass continued to reverberate through the room. Chingu resisted the discomfort and placed his hand on the glass. A sticky and wet sensation came from his fingertips, and that gave Chen Gu quite a shock. The stain was on the inside of the window, which meant that the creature that was scratching the window was also inside the room. The brain took 0.something seconds to catch up to the situation. Chen Gu immediately shoved the window open without any hesitation. Fresh air flew into the room. Chen Gu leaped out of the window. Just as he turned around to adjust his posture, he saw a pool of blackish-red damp that was growing on the ceiling. Chin Gu slammed the window shut with the back of his hand. He stepped on the palm-white edge, and the sound of scratching became clearer and clearer. He took out Lin Cici's phone, opened the camera app, and aimed it inside the room. The image that showed up caused a chill to run down his spine. There was someone crawling on the ceiling. He was wearing a uniform from the trash collection center. Several arms grew from his chest. There were male and female arms with varying lengths and sizes. The only similarity between the arms was that all of the nails had been grounded away, and the exposed skin was dripping blackish-red blood. The expanding pool of damp that Chen Gu had seen earlier was actually left behind by the waving of these arms. That thing was dangling above me? The window kept shaking. The monster had already run to the side of the window. He was hanging upside down from the ceiling, and the arms waved maddeningly. They scratched the window as they attempted to pull Chen Gu back into the room. The stained window started to crack. Chen Gu was not going to stay, and he jumped away from the edge to the wall. No wonder the psycho in cubicle 7 didn't come out to get me, there is a worker posted at the center. 
The worker who dangled from the ceiling was a very scary type, the kind that would wake one up from the dream. It's probably responsible for categorizing the trash. Are the arms on its chest and stomach also recycled items? The thought that he had been in close vicinity with such a monster for a long time caused Chin Ji's back to ooze with cold sweat. You really cannot let your guard down for even a second at this school. Every single room is like a living nightmare. Sitting on the wall, Chinga took out the phone and snapped a picture of the small building's only window. The window frame shook for a while before stopping. Just like the red specter who could not leave the lab, this worker appeared like it could not leave the trash collection center as well. The red specter at the lab was responsible for the maintenance of the rules at the lab, and this monster with hands coming from his stomach should be responsible for looking after the trash collection center. The school was like a microcosm of a society with ghosts and red specters as the citizens. This gave Chen Gu a preposterous feeling. The owner of the school appears to be trying hard to simulate the world outside the door, but why are they doing that? This scenario was completely different from any of the scenarios that Chen Gu had visited in the past. He had not encountered such obedient red specters before. Even at his own haunted house, when dealing with red specters, Chen Gu usually reasoned with them because he was afraid that other methods might cause them to go on a rampage. To be able to make so many red specters act so obediently is a sign of a big trouble. Although, this could be a good thing. At least I don't need to worry about being constantly chased by them. Sitting on the tall wall, on Chin Ji's left side was the dark night school with a foreboding presence, but his right side had blurry lights and the occasional laughter of students. One side was creepy and depressed, whereas the other was lively. This contrast reminded Chin Gu of the paintings that he had seen in the art room earlier. The two campuses formed a stark contrast, similar to those inverted paintings. However, this did not mean that the Western campus for graduate students had to be safer than the Eastern campus meant for working and adult students. After all, a normal university would not be so lively after midnight. If the Eastern campus was like a cemetery that was enveloped in a nightmare, then Western campus was like a machine that did not know rest. One pulled negative emotions to express humanity's darkest nature to its full potential while the other hit a machine-like coldness amid raucousness. It felt like human nature had been fully silenced. The hidden terror at both campuses is completely different, this is something that I could not have imagined before. The cold wind caressed his cheeks. Chenga had never been so awakened in his life. He lowered his head to glance at the western campus. There was a squat two-story building that was built along the wall. Similar to the trash collection center at the eastern campus, it was attached to the wall. After I leap over, should I want to return to this side, I'll have to enter that building, which I'm assuming is the trash collection center for the western campus. I'll have to climb up to the window again and jump over. Chen Ge had no idea why the school would come up with such a design. He stood on the wall and looked into the distance. The two campuses were separated by the tall wall. There was no gate or door, and the only connecting locale was the trash collection centers. Could it be that the trash collection centers are the entrances? The students of the eastern campus are trash for the western campus? Sitting on the wall, Chen Gu was thinking and had not made his move when he suddenly saw a man in leather shoes walking out from the brush. Mr. Bai? How did he know that I'm here? Did the manager at the center give him the news? That's likely. He was probably attracted here by the sound of battle with the girl in the forest. Chenga sat on the wall. If he returned to the eastern campus now, the chance of him being captured was very high. After giving it some thought, Chengu descended to the western campus. When he was on the wall, he had memorized the layout of the buildings on the western campus. The scale of the western campus was several times the size of the eastern campus, and the layout was quite complicated. Bending over, Chingu went into hiding inside the brush. Chingu silently approached the western campus trash collection center. The western campus center was obviously cleaner than the one on the eastern side. The term trash collection center was written clearly on the door. 
There was no litter on the road, and there was no strange smell. Several trash trucks were even parked next to the door. Chingu pushed on the door lightly. The wooden door fell away under his touch. The decoration of the interior was almost identical to its eastern counterpart. Even in real life, it's almost impossible to find such a clean trash collection center. Chapter 792 Art Club If Eastern Campus was a nightmare that one could not wake up from, then the Western Campus was like a beautiful fairy tale. However, the one thing that concerned Chin Gu was that both campuses came from the same person's mind. Chin Gu did not pause for long at the trash collection center. He was worried that he might wake up the manager there again. Mr. Bai won't follow me to the Western Campus, right? Looking at the wall that was almost three meters tall, Chen Ji's lips curled into a smile. He was about to begin a completely new experience. I wonder if the rules in the Eastern Campus are applicable here as well. For the sake of security, I'd better not stay at a fixed location for too long. Rushing to leave, Chen Gu followed the edge of the brush and moved toward the Western Campus. Without walking for that long, Chen Gu noticed that something was off. Different from the eastern campus, the brush on the western side had been carefully trimmed and cared for. There was no wild grass at all, and in the distance, he could see very clearly that someone was walking through the brush. Since I cannot hide here, I will figure out another method. Chenga took out Lin Cici's phone and used it to scan around him first. After ensuring that there was no one following him, he took out the working outfit that he had found in the laboratory and put it on. Chingu brushed away the dust, smoothed down the edges, took a deep breath, and straightened his back. The people from the eastern campus all refer to me as Lin Sisi. Every single one of them wants me to be their scapegoat. I wonder what the differences between the occupants of the western and eastern campuses are. As a student, he had limited access to the campus. Not only could the teachers intercept him easily, other students would not be afraid when they saw him. Therefore, the first thing that Chen Gu did when he crossed over to the Western campus was disguise as a member of staff. I should find some easily bullied students to try this out. If I can successfully trick them, it means that this method does work. Chen Gu still had no idea why the people from the Eastern campus referred to him as Lin Cici. Perhaps every living human who entered the campus would be called that. The manager of the school probably won't expect me to come over to the western campus. After all, the two campuses are separated by a very tall wall, and the only way through is through the trash collection centers. At the eastern campus, Chinga felt weirdly constrained like there had been a pair of eyes constantly on him. However, this feeling disappeared completely when he crossed over to the other campus. Clearing his throat, Chinga did a few breathing exercises and his expression turned serious. Those who did not know him would probably mistake him for an expressionless teacher when they saw him. After placing the nails in his pocket, where he could reach easily, Chin Gu held the bag with one hand and walked out of the brush, strolling openly through the campus. It appears to be quite lively over there. The western and eastern campuses were indeed different. Chinga only took several steps before he saw two students walking toward him from afar. They had the appearance of normal students in real life. They looked ordinary, nothing stood out about them. They had that look of innocence and hope toward future that characterized teens. After several years in the workforce, that hope would be gradually winded away. The light in their eyes would disappear, and in its place would come tiredness and helplessness. However, these students were different, they felt like life was in their own grasp. They believed that if they held their hands tight, the beautiful future would not slip through their fingers. They appear much more normal than the creatures on the eastern campus. Looking at them makes me feel younger. After experiencing so many things, Chen Ji's mental age had already far surpassed his actual age. Slowing down, Chen Gu kept his head lowered like he was contemplating something. The two students walked toward him with talk and laughter. I was chosen by the swimming club. The senior approved of my application herself. In the future, I can openly admire her. 
Perhaps she might even be my coach and teach me personally. In your dreams. The female seniors from the swimming club only interact with new male members when it's recruitment time. After you join the club, you'll be assigned a muscular male senior. Wouldn't that be even more exciting? Go to hell. I'm just joking. What kind of club did you join? I used to like painting, but it's strange, how come our school doesn't have an art club? That's impossible. You simply haven't found it, most likely. It's true. I've asked the seniors, and they also have no idea about it. Then I found the counselor, and he just gave me a random excuse. Then why won't you just switch for another club? How about you join the swimming club as well? One-on-one -on -one teaching sessions with a female senior. It's going to be great. I still wish to join the art club. Ah. Sorry. Sorry. The male student was too caught up in his conversation, and he accidentally bumped into Chen Ji's shoulder. Rubbing his shoulder, Chen Gu stared at the two students with a stone-cold glare. He did not speak but stood to block the middle of the road. I'm sorry, I really didn't mean it, the male student apologized profusely. I hear that you wish to join the art club? Chen Gu glanced casually at the man. Teacher, do you know where our school's art club is? The way that the student referred to him as a teacher gave Chen Gu quite a relief. The panic lessened. Why do you insist on joining the art club? Chen Gu kept his tone calm, making it difficult to tell what he was thinking. It's not that I insist on joining the art club. I simply like to paint, and other than that. The male student scratched his head and started to stammer. Since it's not necessary for you to join the art club, never mind. Chenga made to leave. He gave off the impression of an eccentric young teacher. Teacher, wait. The male student pouted. You might not believe me when I tell you this, but recently, I've been having the same dream every night. What do you dream about? Chenga slowed down. I cannot remember. Whenever I wake up, I would forget all about my dreams. But since it occurred so many times, there is a lingering impression in my mind. I can only remember painting something in my dream. The student also thought that he was being quite preposterous, and his face was red from the shame, as if afraid that Chen Go might treat him as a nut job. That's why you want to join the art club? Chen Go looked the student up and down. What's your name? Zhou Tu. Okay, I've memorized it. Chen Gu still wanted to ask a few more questions, but another few students were coming over from the other side. Afraid of being exposed, Chen Gu stopped the questioning. Go back and think about it. If you really want to join the art club, come and find me at the club recruitment place. Chen Gu had already spotted the small pavilion where the club recruitment was happening. It was filled with people and very bright. In fact, it gave him the fleeting impression that he had returned to real life. Leaving with slow steps, Chen Gu wore the staff outfit to disguise himself as a member of staff. He was honestly quite good at it and had a more intimidating presence than normal teachers. Just 10 meters away, Chen Gu encountered three more students. These students were chatting, the topic ranged from the school entrance exam to games. There was light in their eyes and smiles that came from their hearts. This caused Chen Gu to start to wonder if he was perhaps in some kind of illusion. Chapter 793, You Can Call Me Mr. Bai, Are They Really Ghosts? Can ghosts even be so innocent and pure? Do ghosts also play video games and make jokes? Chen Gu started to have second doubts. He was unsure whether these students were actual ghosts or not. If they were ghosts, it was possible that they had no idea that they were already dead. Arriving at the pavilion where the club recruitment drive was, every single club had people lining up to register. There were slogans pasted everywhere, and in the middle of the pavilion, the members of the street dancing club were performing. Nothing feels out of place. Am I really inside a door? Walking through the pavilion, the sounds gradually weakened as Chen Gu reached the edge of the pavilion. He found a quiet place to sit down. He planned to observe the situation for now. Based on the clues 
given by Zhou Yu earlier, these children should all have forgotten something. Are they really happy here? Chen Ge had no answer. He was not one of the students and could not make the choice on their behalf. His eyes scanned each of the student before his gaze finally stopped next to him. About three meters away from him sat a thin student. The child sat on the step alone with no friends around him. He looked at the crowd bustling through the pavilion with envy in his eyes. Chen Ji's interest in the child was piqued. He walked toward him. Hey, why aren't you going to join one of the clubs? Hearing Chen Ji's voice, the male student was shocked. When he saw Chen Gu walk toward him, subconsciously, he turned to leave. You're a man, what are you so afraid of? Chen Gu walked to the student's side. Just go and apply for the club that you want to join. There's no need to hesitate. I. The male student lowered his head and leaned forward like he was hiding something. Don't tell me, you wish to join the art club? But the school does not have an art club? Chen Gu guessed. Being shown kindness by Chen Gu, the student answered, I wish to learn how to dance, but. He stood up, and then Chen Gu realized that the child was limping. His leg left was heavily disformed. But the club refuses to take me. The male student was depressed. Actually, not only the dance club, many clubs rejected me in a roundabout way. There are two extra credits to grab if you join a club, and that's what's bothering me. Don't worry, leave it to me. Chen Gu patted the child's shoulder. He was not good at consoling people, but he was good at solving problems. You? The child raised his head to look at Chen Gu. A trace of distrust was visible in his eyes. I am a teacher here. Since I've encountered your situation, I cannot just sit idly by. Chen Gu took out various IDs for Mr. Bai out from his bag. When he was at the staff dormitory in the eastern campus, he had swiped the IDs. Using his thumb to block the picture on the ID, Chen Gu showed the ID to the boy. Never mind. If you force them to take me, they will not feel good about it either. The male student pursed his lips. I don't want to create problem for others. I'll be fine on my own. You are one of our students and thus one member of the family. There's no need to be act all embarrassed. Mr. Bai, thank you, but it's okay. Stay here. I'll be back in a minute. Chen Ge entered the pavilion again. He asked some of the clubs for their opinion, but there were very few clubs that were willing to accept the child. Returning to the student's side, the latter seemed to have guessed the result already. Teacher, there's no need to mind. It's fine. A student like you is not an isolated case. Since everyone is unwilling to accept you, then this is more than one student's problem, but a problem for the school. Chen Ji's expression suddenly turned serious. We are born with our body, we cannot do anything to change the nature gift that we're blessed with. However, we can change the impression of the people around us, which is the strength and responsibility of education. The student nodded. When he heard that, his suspicion toward Chen Gu completely disappeared. Wait here, I refuse to believe that there is nothing to be done. Chen Gu passed through the pavilion again to arrive at the small office next to the pavilion. There were many students there since they were there to update their club's information. Mixing among the crowd, Chen Gu silently sought his way into the office. He was worried about running into other teachers, so he limited his movement to the first floor. The office used to keep the information of the clubs was open. A female teacher was writing something with her head down inside. Next to her were several students compiling the club's information. After taking a glance at the door, Chen Gu directly strode into the room. He acted very naturally like he worked there, for real. The female teacher probably thought that it was one of the students walking in, so she did not even raise her head. The other students did turn Chen Ji's way, but they did not say anything. Walking to an empty table, Chen Ji's mental constitution held firm. Very calmly, he opened the drawer and found a copy of a new club formation and application. Then he sat down at the table. Using the pen, he wrote some simple things and added the school seal to the form. 
Then, he shoved the entire document into his bag and left the office. Passing through the pavilion, Chin Gu found the male student again. There's a club that is willing to accept you, and I am the teacher responsible for that club. Would you like to join it or not? Your own club? The male student nodded. Sure. Since no other club was willing to take him and this mister. By treated him so well, there was no reason for the student to reject the offer. Mr. Bai, what kind of club is this? Sign here first. Chinga took out one of the club registration forms and handed it to the student. Okay. The student signed his name on the form. Wang Yicheng? Not a bad name. Chinga put the form away and took out the club formation form that he had just written. Our club is called the Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club. Normally, there's nothing to do. Most of the time, we'll spend time studying the strange happenings at the school and study some supernatural, mysterious events that science cannot explain. Hearing Chin Ji's introduction, the student was stunned. Mr. Bai, are you serious? See the seal on this form? Why would I lie to a student? Chen Good zipped up the bag. You've signed the member form, but I won't trouble you if you wish to leave the club. The two credits, however, will be taken away from your score. Please don't. I was just shocked. The student had no idea whether he should be happy or sad. He had a feeling that his school life was about to change. That's much better. First, tell me everything that has happened to you. Do not leave out even the smallest detail. Chenga took out pen and paper to record. Here? We start now? Quick. Do not feel any pressure. This is the tradition of our club. Any new members have to share the supernatural events that have transpired to them. Chingu was not lying. He merely did not tell Wang Yicheng that he was the first and only member of the Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club. Chapter 794 Mr. Bai's Club Seeing the look in Chin Ji's eyes, Wang Yicheng's neck shrunk backward, and he grumbled internally. This teacher is a kind person, but his personality is a bit weird. He probably doesn't have many friends in real life either. Teacher, I'm just a very normal student. I have not encountered anything special in my life, much less any supernatural events, Wang Yicheng said in embarrassment. I am a bit clumsy, and you can see the issue with my leg. I think I will just join the calligraphy club. After all, they agreed to let me join even though the senior's tone is not that good. I'll ask you the questions, and you only need to answer them honestly, Chinga said seriously. Once he put on such a demeanor, Wang Yicheng immediately surrendered. He sat on the steps and gave it some thought. After a while, he said, I have not encountered any supernatural phenomenon myself, but when I joined the university, I did hear a curious ghost story from a senior. A ghost story? When Chen Go heard these words, his eyes twinkled. The senior was from the student council. When we were assigned our dormitory, he was our guide. He seemed to have something against me. The story that he told was probably made up to scare me. What story is it? Tell me. The room that I was assigned is room 413. Normally, a dormitory room houses six people, but strangely enough, my dormitory room only has five people. There is a bed that is purposely left empty. Wang Yicheng started to tell the ghost story that he had heard. Initially, I thought that the student who had bed number four was away due to some emergency, so he was not around for the new student orientation. However, that senior told me that no one actually occupies that bed number four. When I asked him why, he told me, a long time ago, a student with a physical deformity owned that bed. No one was willing to be his friend, so he used pranks to get people's attention. In the end, it only made others hate him even more. All the others ganged up to pull a prank on him. As Wang Yicheng was about to continue, he was interrupted by Chen Gu. Do you know what kind of prank the other students pulled on him? Chen Gu wanted to confirm the speculation in his mind, so he asked this question. Scratching his head, Wang Yicheng continued with a frown. 
According to the senior, the students tricked the kid to go to the toilet at midnight. They were going to scare him by acting like ghosts. But somehow, an accident happened, and the child perished. And then what happened? Since then, bed 4 in room 413 has always been left empty. The senior said that the child would occasionally return at midnight. If we wake up to use the toilet at midnight and run into an extra person in the room, do not interact with him. That's all? Chen Gu was not satisfied. Try to think about other things that have happened to you. Like, have you been having a recurring dream, or do some extra memories appear in your mind? Wang Yicheng looked at Chen Gu with a bitter expression. He knew that Chen Gu was not kidding, so he replied, Teacher, I am a very heavy sleeper, and I never dream. It's embarrassing to say this about myself, but I'm a forgiving person. I don't mind the bullying that others do to me. That won't do. There are good people and bad people in this world. Your kindness will only be seen as weakness in the bad people's eyes. They will only bully you even more. Chen Gu looked at Wang Yicheng, and his pupils narrowed. Suddenly, Chen Gu realized that this was the student whom he had been looking for. Wang Yicheng had a good impression of Chen Gu, trusted the latter, and most importantly, would listen to Chen Ji's orders. There were obvious holes in the Western campus student's memory. Chen Gu wished to find out more, and he intended to ask some personal questions. Wang Yicheng, what does your parent do for a living? Family was the most important part of a child's life. Chen Gu did not think that the students would forget something as important as that. They own a restaurant. Why? Wang Yicheng thought that Chen Gu had switched the topic very quickly. Then, do you miss them? After asking that question, Chen Gu was immediately grasped by worry. Not really. They only dropped me here yesterday, but I guess I'll start to miss them after some time, Wang Yicheng answered seriously. Yesterday? Chen Gu asked a few more questions. The young man's answers were flawless and truthful. However, once Chen Gu gave it some thought, he noticed that a great chunk of Wang Yicheng's life was missing. For example, when Chen Gu asked him about the summer holiday after the big exam, the young man would stammer like that part of his memory had been vanquished. It's fine. There's time to think about it. Maybe it'll come back to you later. Chen Gu had already gained a lot from Wang Yicheng. The Western campus also had room 413, and it was also tied to a ghost story. There were many similarities between the two campuses. Chen Gu wondered how deep the similarity went. Compared to the eastern campus, the western campus is too friendly. I have to make use of this opportunity. Chen Gu felt like he should not limit his questioning to Wang Yicheng. He needed more people to compile a fuller picture. Patting away the dust from his pants, Chen Gu stood up from the steps. Xiao Wang, I'm going to take a spin around the pavilion and try to get a few new members for our club. Chen Gu returned to the pavilion. The nature of the club meant that he could not have a big promotion. He could only approach some kind-looking students and ask about their interest. After being rejected five to six times, Chen Gu finally recruited the second member. This student was called Zhang Zhu, his face looked like it had been burned by fire. His left cheek and neck were scarred, and it looked quite scary. Mr. Bai, will I cause problem if I join your club? After all, I don't think anyone is willing to be in the same club as me. Zhang Ju had a scary exterior, but a kind-hearted interior. It'll be fine. The kids in the club are all good people. Chen Gu patted the young man's shoulder. I hope I won't hear anything like that from you again. Chen Ji's sudden seriousness flustered Zhang Ju. This was the first time that someone had willingly come to be his friend. Okay. That's more like it. Come, I'll bring you to go meet the other club members. Chen Gu was about to leave when he heard a familiar voice. Good evening, teacher, may I have some of your time? Chen Gu turned and saw a familiar face. Behind him, the student who greeted him was Zhou Tuesday. He had met Chen Gu before and had asked him about the art club. Xiao Zhou? How can I help you? 
Chen Ge asked, casually. Zhang Zhu, who stood next to him, silently lowered his head, hiding his face from Zhou Tu's sight. Teacher, I've made my decision, I wish to join the art club. Can you tell me where it is? Zhou Tu clenched his fists. He seemed to have something that he wished, but had not said. Chapter 795 Good kid, bad kid, I know where the art club is, but I cannot tell you the location now. How about this? Chen Ge continued speaking after a short pause. You join my club for now, to fill up the members. If your performance is satisfactory, then I guarantee that I'll personally take you to the art club. Join your club first? Zhou Tu looked at Zhang Ju next to Chen Go. Honestly, the child really did look quite scary. Is this some kind of test? He grumbled internally. He had asked a lot of them, and they either had not even heard of the art club or tried their best to change the topic. Only Chen Gu had given him a clear answer that the art club really did exist. After giving it some thought, even though Zhou Tu thought that Chen Gu was a bit unconventional, he trusted that a teacher would not lie to a student, so in the end, he nodded. Okay, I'll join. But Mr. Bai, what club is this? Fill in the form first. After Zhou Tu filled in the form, Chen Ge said, Our club is called Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club. Its main objective is to study the supernatural events happening around the school. Zhou Tu was baffled when he heard the introduction. He could barely believe that his school would even have a club like that. However, since it was managed by Mr. Bai, it had to have been officially approved by the school. There are too many people here. We'll find a quieter place to talk. Chen Ge led his two new members to leave the pavilion. Suddenly, an argument erupted in the middle of the pavilion. Many students stopped to see what it was. Even Chen Ge stopped moving. What happened? Looks like someone wanted to join the street dance club but was rejected. Then they got into an argument. It's just a club. What's there to argue about? Someone threw a punch. There's a fight. Mr. Bai, should we go stop the fight? This is so horrible that new students would act like this. Even though that was what he said, Chen Ge did not personally go to stop the fight. He was masquerading as Mr. Bai, and thus, he could not pull too much attention at this kind of public event. After a while, both parties of the fight were pulled away. The female teacher that Chen Ge had seen in the office earlier came out. The teacher appeared like she had many things to do and was very busy. Therefore, without asking for an explanation, she lectured all the students that were involved in the fight. After the students dispersed, the teacher with the explosive temper also left. She returned to the office, continuing her work. The teachers at this school seem to have lost some of their memory as well. That is different from the teachers on the eastern campus. Chen Ge did not want to find trouble, but trouble liked to seek him out. The student who had gotten into a fight with the members of the dance club shuffled Chen Ji's way while holding his arm. It was unclear whether he was not looking ahead or some other reason, but he tripped when he was going up the stairs and happened to fell next to Chen Go. F asterisk CK. Even the stairs are bullying me today. Why is everyone bullying me? He yelled. His eyes were red as he tried to force himself to get up. Are you all right? Chen Ge studied the student. The young man had a refreshing look, not that old. His earlobes were punctured, and there was a large stain on his arm like a tattoo that had not been properly erased. The child had a rather special appearance. He was not dressed in any branded goods, but he was quite fashionable. He did not look like a student. I'm fine. The male glanced at Chen Gu. The teacher before him was the first who had shown him any care. You were the one who threw the first punch during the fight with the members of the dance club, right? What if that's true? Are you going to punish me? The gaze that the student gave Chen Gu became unfriendly almost instantly. I merely wish to say that there are so many members from the dance club, and there is only one you. Why would you pick a fight with them? Couldn't you have talked it out? Such recklessness will only bring you harm. 
Chen Jie's voice was mature and calm, just like a big brother. Seeing that Chen Ge had no intention of scolding him but seemed to be concerned about him, the male student's voice softened, and he stopped being so aggressive. Mainly, it's because they bullied me. Because of my appearance, the student responsible for the recruitment was purposely going against me. To join the club, I reached the limit of my patience, but in the end, they told me that the registration had already reached the limit and told me to join another club. If that's really the case, then you're not entirely in the wrong. Chingu signaled for the student to move to the side. But why is it that you insist on joining the club? Do you like street dancing that much? That's not really true either. The student finally told the truth after holding it in for so long. I've gone to ask a few clubs already, and I've been rejected. Probably because I stand out too much. The student laughed self-deprecatingly. He probably thought that was too embarrassing to admit, so he left right after. Wait a minute, I have a club here. Do you want to consider joining it? Chenga took out the registration form. I see a great potential in you. If those clubs don't want you, it's their loss. Seeing the form that Chen Gu was holding, the student hesitated. He shook his head. Pride is earned, something given is called charity. I do not need charity from anyone. That's quite a backbone you have there. I find myself admiring you more and more. Chen Gu gave the student the form directly. Your appearance is different from other students, which means that you must have a history that is different from them. Can you tell me your history? Chinga acted sincerely and spoke with a soft tone. This helped the student to walk out from his unapproachable exterior. There's nothing to tell really. I haven't really met my parents before, it was my grandmother who raised me. She opened a small food cart selling dumplings inside an alley, and the two of us barely survived with that income. When I was young, I got mixed up with the ruffians running the alley. Smoking, drinking, stealing, I have done all that you can think of. It's fun. After mixing with them for a few years, one day, it started to rain heavily. I returned earlier to my grandmother's stall, and I saw the local police trying to take my grandmother's stall away. At the time, I lost it and got into a fight with them. The student bit on his lips, and his expression was quite complicated. Injuring them caused me to get sent to the youth penitentiary. When I came out, my grandmother hugged me and cried for a long time. Actually, there is nothing to be said. Later, I got back to school, and I managed to score high enough to get into this university. The student's life was rather harsh. Chin Gu studied the man's face closely, and he saw shyness of youth. However, behind it hid plenty of anxiety and tiredness, like he had been in constant fear and worry of something. You are a good kid. You just have a tendency to act too rashly. But I like that recklessness. Come and join my club, credits are not that big an issue. Chen Gu gave the invitation again. The student did not reject him this time. He signed his name on the form, Zhu Long I have another new member. Looks like our club is quite popular. Chen Gu put the form away. Come, let's go find a more secluded place and we will start our first club activity. Chapter 796, I can take you there Chen Ji Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club already had four members, the limping Wang Yi Cheng, Zhang Zhu with a burnt face, Zhou Tu, who was looking for the art club, and Zhu Long, who had a penchant for getting into fights. Each member had their unique personality. If Chen Ge had really been a teacher at the school, his club would have been very interesting. Unfortunately, that was not the truth. Chen Gu wanted to get information from these kids, but he did not really want to make use of them completely. As long as it was within his power, Chen Gu would help these students find the memories that they had lost and fight to get them out of this place with him. Passing the pavilion, the members of the Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club gathered for the first time. The members looked at each other, and a not so positive thought appeared in their minds. This club was like an orphanage where unwanted kids were abandoned. Mr. Bai, don't tell me that this is everyone from our club. 
Zhou Tu wanted to join the art club, but somehow, he found himself in this club instead. He felt scammed. The atmosphere was quite awkward. Wang Yicheng and Zhang Zhu, who had physical disfigurements, moved their eyes away and did not dare speak. Zhu Long, though, appeared unfazed, if anything, his curiosity toward this club only grew. You are correct, but I suggest you watch your tone. In some time, you'll realize how lucky you are to have joined this club. Chen Jie's voice was laced with pride. Every member of this club has been personally picked by me. Everyone here is distinct from others. My club does not need common people, only extraordinary students are allowed to join. Zhou Tu could not help rolling his eyes when he heard that. If not for the fact that he had already signed the form, he would have left. I know that you have a hard time believing me now and doubt the purpose of our club. Chen Jie's eyes scanned the pupils. I am not one who likes to use words to persuade others. When we begin the club activity, I will use the reality to recover the actual truth for you. Chen Jie's expression was so serious that he did not appear like he was joking. The few students quieted down. Before I let you see the real world, I have a question to ask you. What kind of world do you think you're living in? Chen Gu wished to know more about these students' past, to try and find clues from their existing memories. Wang Yicheng was the first to share. He retold the story of his past. Then, it was Zhu Long's and Zhang Zhu's turns. Zhang Zhu had been a very normal child before he attended high school. He was a hard-working student, and he had managed to score enough for a good university. His life plan was laid, but the course strayed on the day of his high school graduation. That night, he and his friends had gone to karaoke. When fire spread throughout the building, Zhang Zhu and his friends had been trapped in the private room. When he had finally been rescued, his cheek and scalp had been severely singed, which had left behind a scary-looking scar. Zhang Zhu had stayed at home for two months to receive psychological treatment. When his therapist thought that he was ready, he had chosen to face his new self and come to the university. The story was very inspiring, but Chen Gu heard some problems in it. Can you remember the days when you were receiving treatment at the hospital? Theoretically speaking, this story should scar Zhang Zhu deeply, but when he told the story, there was no visible change to his expression. It was like he was telling another person's story. Regarding the days when he received treatment at the hospital, Zhang Zhu stammered a lot. Chen Ge knew that he was not trying to hide the facts on purpose, the child simply could not remember the details. Tragedy struck Zhang Zhu during the last holiday of his high school years. When Wang Yicheng was telling his story earlier, that part of his memory was very vague as well. So was the case with Zhu Long Chen Ge looked at the students gathered before him, and a theory appeared in his mind. These few students did not really forget what had happened during that last holiday, but their actual date of death fell within that period. Lingering spirits carried their memories with them, whether they were good or bad. Therefore, they would remember everything that happened before that holiday clearly, but could not seem to recall the details of that holiday. Mr. Bai, are you feeling well? Zhou Tu was a very astute person, he was a great observer of people. He noticed that Chen Ji's expression was not so perky after he heard the few students' stories, and so he asked, how about we just postpone the activity today? You should go and rest. I've learned about their pasts. What about yours? Chen Ji's expression swiftly returned to normal. I have led a very normal left. Normally, I spent time studying, drawing, eating, and sleeping. I haven't even been in a relationship before so there is nothing interesting. Zhou Tu shrugged. He felt like he was the most normal member of this club. Didn't you tell me that you have been having this recurring dream recently? Do I have to tell everyone that? Zhou Yu did not believe that Chen Gu would expose that fact before so many people. I will not force you. If you wish to talk about it, go ahead. It's fine if you don't. Well, it's not really a secret. Zhou Tu wished to rely on Chen Ge to get to art club. From his perspective, this strange club was just a means to an end. 
I came to this school rather early. Since registering at the dormitory, I have had the same dream every night. In the dream, I sit inside a room filled with oil paintings. The atmosphere is strange. There are twelve other people sitting around me, and everyone is painting. Oil painting room? Thirteen paintings in total? Chin Gu was instantly reminded of what he had seen at the night school's lab building. He realized that he had come across a valuable treasure. Zhou Tu could dream about the inside of the art room. So, this meant that he had probably been there before and was perhaps the painter behind one of the paintings. However, due to a certain reason, he had forgotten all about that. Yes, with each passing night, the dream becomes clearer, like I have been there myself, but I have no memory of this at all. Zhou Tu slowly lowered his head. This is a very horrible feeling. When I woke up every morning, I wanted to recover this dream, so I grabbed a brush and tried to paint the vestiges from my dream. However, I could not find the paint that I need, so I've been looking for the art club. After hearing Zhou Tu's story, Chingu was silent for a while before saying, If I said that I've seen the place in your dream before, would you believe me? You've seen it? Yes, it's right in this school. Chingu said affirmatively. If you want to, I can take you there, but you have to promise me one thing. What is it? Zhou Tu's voice changed. Only he knew how important this dream was. From now on, you have to listen to my every order and that is the condition for me taking you there. Chapter 797, Nightmare Weaved by Everyone, No Problem Zhou Tu gave his promise almost without hesitation. From his perspective, students should listen to their teachers. After getting the promise from Zhou Tu, Chin Gun nodded lightly. He did not request for the club to follow many formalities, he merely needed every one of the members to follow his orders. You will all feel glad for having made this choice in a while. Chin Gu looked at the busy Western campus. It is not my intention to change all this, but everyone has the right to know. After all, this nightmare is weaved from everyone's collective memory. The students had no idea what he was talking about. They just felt like this Mr. Bai was different from other teachers. All right, now that we have gotten to know each other, we will begin today's club activity now. Chen Gu signaled for the members to get closer. Have you heard of any ghost stories regarding our school? Teacher, what do you mean? Zhou Tu had a bad feeling in his stomach. This teacher appeared like he was going to take them to go and do something dangerous. Since our club is Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club, our club activity will be to study these phenomena. What's wrong with that? Chen Gu said with such severity that the students had to believe him. That is not wrong technically, but won't people think that we're a hem if we go searching for supernatural phenomenon like that? Zhu Long coughed drilly. He blanked on a favorable description. Furthermore, it's getting late. If we're discovered by other teachers, won't we get into trouble? Don't worry. Chen Gu took out Mr. Bai's identification document. His finger was still expertly blocking the picture. The school won't fault us. I'll be there to explain everything. Hearing the promise from Chen Gu, Zhou Tu and Zhu Long visibly relaxed, but Wang Yicheng still looked like there was something bothering him. Xiao Wang, what's on your mind? There's no need to hide anything now that you're part of the club. Mr. Bai, I was thinking, what if we really run into something that we shouldn't, then what can we do? We are just a few normal students. It was unclear whether Wang Yicheng was really scared by the ghost story told by his senior or there was something in his memory that had not properly been cleaned. In any case, when Chen Gu said that he was going to take them to study supernatural phenomena, this student's reaction had been rather weird. Certain things have to be seen to be believed. Also, there's no need to worry about your safety. Even though our club is small, every member is an elite. Furthermore, I'll be there with you. Everything is under control, Chen Gu said confidently and calmly. He gave off a very trustworthy feeling. So, let's hear it. What kind of ghost stories about this school have you guys heard of? The pavilion was not as busy as before. 
most of the students had completed their club registration. The surrounding temperature appeared to have dropped as well. I heard of a ghost story before. Even though I believe it should have been made up, I've met the person in the story. Zhang Ju was the first to speak. Yesterday, when I arrived at the university, because of my unique circumstances, the teacher asked me to go to the office for some questions, asking if I need any help. At the time, there was a senior inside the office. He was crying nonstop, mumbling a girl's name on his lips. I overheard the conversation between him and the teacher. I found that the name that he kept repeating was the name of one of his admirers. That day was his birthday. The girl had asked to meet him in the small garden to confess her feelings to him, but he had rejected her. At the time, he didn't think much of it. He had followed his dormitory mates back to drink and play, forgetting all about it. However, the next day, the school announced that the girl had gone missing. In the end, they found the girl's body inside the garden, she had died a horrible death. The scariest thing was that her time of death was before meeting the senior. Even now, no one can tell what really happened. The senior was also preparing to leave school due to overwhelming psychological pressure. Zhang Ju touched the part of his face that was burned. That's all. I am not clear about the actual details. If you wish to go to the garden, I can lead the way. If the girl was dead before she met up with the senior, then it is possible that senior was lying? Is he the actual the killer and the girl did not like him at all? Chinga thought back to the girl whom he had met in the woods of the eastern campus. The girl had been too caught in resentment to be communicated with. I personally think that the killer is someone else, and the girl merely wanted to see the person whom she had a crush on at the last moment of her life, but unfortunately, he was not interested in her. Zhu Long touched the scar on his arm. That was a scar left behind by tattooing. That is a person's name, right? I'm surprised that you're such a romantic. Zhou Tu glanced at Zhu Long's arm and then turned to Chen Gu. Mr. Bai, how about we go to that garden today and end this activity as soon as possible? We have to return to the dormitory soon. Look, there aren't many people around anymore. There's no need to hurry. What about the rest of you? What kind stories have you heard? I haven't heard of any ghost stories before, but I read a very interesting story on the internet a while back. Zhu Long touched the scar on his arm, habitually. The content was an innocent boy running into a girl that he likes. He gathered his courage to confess his feelings, but the girl didn't answer him immediately. She didn't agree, but she didn't reject him outright either. She merely said that if they can get into the same university, then they will be together forever. The male student was not a good student, but for this promise, he worked extra hard. Unfortunately, his fundamental knowledge was too weak. To have such a drastic improvement in mere months and get into this school is very difficult. At this point, Zhu Long's expression turned very weird. He probably did not notice this change himself. But out of everyone's expectations, the boy finally managed to get into the same university as the girl. As long as one is willing, nothing is impossible. Finally, they got their happy ending. Zhang Zhu sighed. Hearing Zhang Zhu's words, Zhu Long's expression became even stranger, and he shook his head. The girl got into the best medical university in the nation. The boy's score was only 150 marks less than the required mark to apply for that school. When Chen Gu heard the term medical school, he seemed to understand something, but the other members were still confused. Then how did he end up meeting the girl? During one of the autopsy classes. Zhu Long's fingers were practically digging into his muscles, but he did not seem to mind it. The boy was pulled out of the chiller and placed on the girl's autopsy table. They finally ended up at the same university. Well, do you think the girl kept her word and stayed with the boy forever? His expression became even stranger. Zhu Long did not seem to realize the strange changes that were occurring to him. Chapter 798, Upside Down Hourglass Zhu Long did not notice anything abnormal with himself at all. He did not say the name of the boy and girl, 
but he felt as though he had gone through a similar experience. Hey! Wang Yicheng was timid. He saw that Zhu Long seemed possessed and just pushed him away. The cluelessness in Zhu Long's eyes instantly disappeared, and he looked at the people around him before suddenly smiling. Did I scare you guys? Did you know that the first time I heard this story, I was scared, too? There's actually another half to this story, and I had this impression of it in my brain, but I can't remember it no matter what. There's another half? Yeah, but I forgot. Zhu Long laughed. Why do you all look at him like this? This is just a story I saw somewhere. It's not a spooky story that happened in our school. Zhu Long saw that everyone was still staring at him, and the smile from his face disappeared. Don't you guys believe me? Our school isn't a medical university. Our school is a mixed university. There are three medical degrees. Because the teaching resources are weak, there are few students. We usually can't see them at all, but they have three individual laboratories in their practical building. Everyone was a freshman, but Zhang Zhu knew the school very well and knew a lot of information that others did not know. Our school has a dissection room? Zhu Long was dumbfounded. I was just casually speaking. Don't take it seriously. The purpose of our Supernatural Phenomenon Observation Club is to seek the truth. Whether it's real or fake, we will know once we go check it out. Chen Gu was also interested in Zhu Long's story. Zhu Long had been a hoodlum before and sent to juvenile detention center due to getting into trouble with city law enforcement. His past was very similar to that bad child. Coupled with his strange manners, it was hard for Chen Gu not to be suspicious of him. Zhu Long doesn't remember the summer break after finishing high school. Something might have happened in that summer break. Chen Gu had found lots of clues from these children. Now, he just needed to verify them at the school. I'm very relieved that everyone is eager to participate. We'll go to the place you spoke of tonight, Chen Gu said to Zhang Zhu. Let's go to the forest you spoke of. You saw the retiring student with your own eyes. What happened on him might be real. Okay, follow me. Zhang Zhu looked down. This seemed to be his walking habit in order to cover the scar on his face. He was very familiar with this school. He did not seem like a new student at all. It was obvious that the familiarity was etched deep into his bones. It was as though he already belonged to the school. There were few people in the small square now, and not many noticed them. Even if someone saw them, they would not be suspicious. At most, they would be curious. After all, everyone in Chen Ji's club seemed rather unique. The forest was quite far from the square. Chen Gu used this opportunity to familiarize himself with the landscape of the school. The western part of the school was very large. They had been walking for more than 10 minutes, and they still could not see the border. That's an artificial lake. The school forbids people getting close to it at night because someone drowned there in the past. We need to go around it. Zhang Zhu pointed at the pitch black in the distance. If he had not said it, Chen Gu would not even have known that it was a lake. The water was calm and there was no light. Instead of a lake, it was more like a black hole that devoured everything. After walking another few minutes, Zhang Zhu stopped. The girl's body was found in this forest. The schoolyard at night was very scary. Luckily, there were lights on both sides of the road that made them feel a little more assured. There used to be no lights, but after the incident, the school installed the lights. Zhang Zhu was the first to enter the forest, and Chen Gu followed close behind. He was very close to Zhang Zhu and could clearly feel that Zhang Zhu seemed much more relaxed after entering the forest. Perhaps it was because the trees could block the light and no one could see his scarred face. The group were scared when they first entered the forest, worrying that they might encounter that girl. However, after a while, they just felt bored. There's nothing special here. Mr. Bai, that story must be fake. The forest looks normal. There aren't any traces of a murder here. Zhou Tu wanted to leave. He saw Chinggu standing next to a tree hole, 
so he walked over in confusion, Mr. Bai, what are you looking at? Chen Gu ignored Zhou Tu and said without turning back, Zhang Ju. Was the girl's head found in a tree hole? Yeah. Zhang Ju was a little surprised, but after thinking about it, given that Chen Gu was a teacher, it was normal that he knew this. A human head was once hidden in this tree hole? Wang Yicheng stumbled back a step. He was the most timid in the group. Don't run around. There's still hair of the deceased on the branch behind you. Zhang Ju held Wang Yicheng, preventing him from falling over. Don't scare him. Even if a murder happened here, it's not as strange as the spooky story makes out. Zhou Tu did not believe this and just wanted to leave. Little Zhou, the reality is much more terrifying than you imagine. Chen Gu decided not to tell them yet. He had seen a tree hole that was exactly the same on the eastern side of the school. A head had been hidden inside. The western and eastern regions of the school are similar in some ways, but there's one thing that I don't understand. Why is the girl staying on the eastern side while the boy she liked is on the western side? What standard does the school separate the students on? The difference between the female ghost in the tree hole and Zhang Ju was that one kept his sense of reason and looked like an ordinary person, but the other was twisted by hatred. The mental states of the students of the eastern and western districts are completely different. The western students are livelier and have a lot of positive emotions. Meanwhile, the eastern students are plagued by negative emotions and appear half-human half-ghost. After thinking for a while, Chinga thought of the oil painting. If the despair and negative emotions in the door were removed, would it be possible for the door to return to normal? The situations in the two halves of the school were very similar to the scene in the oil painting. The western region sent all the negative emotions through a waste disposal station to the eastern region. The two school districts were like an hourglass. The trash disposal station was the small gap in the center of the hourglass. I think I understand what the headmaster wants to do. Chenga reached into the tree hole. The inside was cleansed. There was nothing left. Chapter 799, Spot the Difference, the tree hole of the eastern region hides the head of a female ghost that is covered in blood and grime. The tree hole in the western region is clean, without even a leaf. The situations in the west and east school districts were complete opposites. An image gradually appeared in Chen Ji's head. If one compared the world behind the door to a bottomless sea of blood, then this ghost school was an hourglass floating in the sea of blood. The headmaster of the school made the glass shell to segregate the school from the blood world and then used some means to send the remnant despair in the western region to the eastern region, making the western school region more and more similar to the outside world. The only connection between the eastern and western school regions was the trash disposal center. The eastern school region was the real testing grounds, while the western region was like a filter that sent out the negative emotions and despair. Chin Gu had been inside the trash disposal center, and he had seen that trash. Despair and hatred are sent away. This explains why the door that Chang Gu opened wasn't dyed red. Normal doors were colored blood red, but this door was different. The memories those children forgot might be related to despair and hatred. How did the headmaster of the school do all this? Is this the power above red specters? Now more than ever, Chin Gu was more curious about the headmaster of the school. If the headmaster just wants to clear out a place without despair behind the door, then why are the students fighting to leave here? Chin Gu had long passed the age of using purely good and evil to judge a person. After receiving the black phone and encountering all those people and ghosts, those who could become top-level red specters all had strong desires, Dr. Gao wanted to revive his wife. The shadow of Liwan Town wanted to become a human and turn Chen Gu into his shadow. Zhang Ya wanted revenge. This meant that the headmaster of the ghost school had to have his own desire. His desire might be related to this school. I feel there must be something more terrifying hidden in this school. I'm only performing a superficial investigation right now. I still haven't seen the true side of the school. The new students knew very little. 
Chengu was thinking that once he had enough power, he could try abducting a teacher to help him. Looking back at his shadow, he noticed that it had stopped squirming. The ghost hidden in his shadow seemed to have awoken. If I can take out the monster at the trash disposal, I pretty much have control of the entrance and can go between the two regions as I please. Chinga had a plan, but it was very hard to put it into action. Mr. Bai, can we go now? This place looks scary, but there are no ghosts. It's all just rumors. Zhou Tu was getting impatient. He had joined the association to gain information about the Arts Society, not to feed the mosquitoes. There's no problem here indeed, but I hope you can all remember the geology of this crime scene. Chenga got up and started walking out of the forest. Why? You will know in the future. Chenga waved his hand. Now, we will go to the next scene, the dissection room in the practical building. Zhang Zhu, lead the way. Hearing that Chen Gu was going another place, the students were dazed. Teach, it's so late already. Are we still going? Why not wait till tomorrow? Wang Yicheng yelped. You guys probably won't be able to see me tomorrow. Even if I can last till tomorrow, you guys won't be in the same state as now. When the ghost in his shadow woke up, Chen Gu was much more confident. But, if we go to the practical building at night and get caught. Zhou Tu did not want to keep doing this with Chen Gu. He felt like he had been abducted on a pirate ship. He thought about leaving, but he was still a child. Which new student dared to argue with a teacher on the second day? Don't worry, I'm here. Chen Gu showed a meaningful smile. The group left the forest and walked along the lake for a while before seeing the practical building. To be honest, Chingu had some mental trauma with the practical lab, but he still went in first. I wasn't scared when I was alone. Now that I have so many companions, there's even less reason to retreat. The practical lab of the eastern region was much larger than that of the western region. There were two buildings, A and B, and each building had six levels. It was very late now, but many rooms were still lit up and figures sometimes flashed by the windows. Mr. Bai, we won't be stopped if we go in now, right? You just need to lead the way. Zhang Zhu walked at the forefront while Chen Gu walked in the middle with his head down. He had thought of five excuses for different situations. The door to building A was not locked, nor was there anyone guarding. Chen Gu and the students got inside easily. Glass doors, white paint, and the same flooring. The layout is very similar to the Western Region's lab building. There was no guardroom on the first floor. Chen Gu and the others walked further down the corridor, and he finally found the difference. The Western Region only had one cargo lift, while the Eastern Region also had stairs. There are three labs of the medical department, one on floor 2 and the rest on floor 6. I don't know if the dissection room is on floor 2 or floor 6. Let's go to floor two first. Zhang Zhu walked toward the stairs. He touched the scar on his face. Ever since leaving the forest, he had kept subconsciously touching the scar on his face. Wait, let's go to floor six first and then floor two. Chen Gu knew the guardroom was on floor two. He grabbed Zhang Zhu's arm and said, it's too troublesome to go up the stairs. Let's take the lift. Chen Gu stopped at the door to the lift, completely ignoring the words for cargo only. The silver doors slowly opened. Chen Gu looked at the familiar scene and walked indecisively. Hurry up, don't waste time. Taking the lift could avoid the guardroom. When all the students entered the lift, Chen Gu pressed the button toward floor 6. The door slowly closed as Chen Gu stared closely at the control board. The button did not light up with his press. His heart slowly rested, but just at that moment, a bad smell floated past. Turning around, all the students were standing next to him. What's wrong, teacher? Do you guys smell a bad odor? Chen Gu looked at the empty corner and thought of something bad. Bad smell? Zhu Long glanced at everyone. Someone farted in the lift? Perhaps. Chenga took back his glance. 
he knew that it was an odor that only rotting corpses emitted. Chapter 800, I am related to her death, the cargo lift slowly rose, before finally stopping at the sixth floor. The silvery-gray doors opened before Chen Gu. The air-conditioning draft blew into the elevator, the temperature inside the lab was much lower than outside. A bright fluorescent light shone on the tiles. The corridor before them was very clean, devoid of any trash. The Eastern Campus Lab building is like this as well but there was definitely no lights there. Chen Gu glanced at the glass on the door, and his reflection stared back at him. How come it feels like I've been here before even though I'm sure that has not happened? Zhang Ju slowly raised his head. He also saw his face on the glass. The fire scorched his face, and the glance of it made people feel uncomfortable. He scratched his head like he was trying hard to remember something. It's fine if you cannot remember it now. I have deja vu feelings like that sometimes, too. I'm sure that I've not been to this new location before, but it feels strangely familiar like I visited the place in my dreams. Chen Gu placed his hand on Zhang Ju's shoulder. The warmth and power from his palm dispersed the anxiety in Zhang Ju's heart. Thank you, sir, but I'm fine. However, it really feels like I've been here before, Zhang Ju replied. It's not in my dreams, but in real life. There are some shreds of a memory in my mind. They are like a ball that has been charred, and I would need to pry with all my might to look into the contents. That's quite an interesting analogy. Chen Gu noticed that Zhang Ju was different from the other students. He had retained more memories than the others. Come, let's get to the autopsy room. Chen Gu had Zhang Ju lead the way, and the group found the autopsy room at the deepest part of the corridor. The lights are not on, there's no one in. Zhu Long peered into the room by leaning on the window. With the light shining in from the corridor, he could only see a single, cold operating table. However, just from the sight of that, his body appeared to shiver from an involuntary reaction. Mr. Bai, do we really need to go in there? Zhou Tu was feeling uneasy. If we don't return now, the bathroom is going to run out of hot water. Wait a minute. It was not Chen Gu who spoke, but Zhu Long who leaned on the door. Since we're here, why don't we go in to take a look? The door is locked, are you suggesting we go find the manager? And tell him what? Please let us into the autopsy room, because we're investigating supernatural events at the school? Zhou Tu regretted joining this club, none of the members appeared to be normal. He bit on his tongue hard. Actually, ever since he arrived at the school, anxiety had been following him. He kept having this recurring dream, and that was enough torture for the young man. He pretended to be calm before others, putting on a brave front, but actually, he was already at the brink of a breakdown. Strange school, but an even stranger club. There's no need to trouble the manager, I have the key, Chinga said as he pulled out a ring of keys from his pocket. I have much greater access than you might previously have thought. The members did not expect Chen Gu to have so many keys. They were very surprised, so surprised that none noticed that the numbers pasted on the keys were different from the ones at Western Campus, and some of them were even stained with blood. Chen Gu stood facing away from the students and used his body to block the door. The keys rattled noisily in one hand while his other hand searched for the scalpel and iron thread that he had found in the toolroom. From the beginning, he had never planned to use the keys to open the door. Due to his occupation, he had encountered many locks and been to many schools, so he had some confidence in his lock-picking skills. After one minute, Chen Ji's forehead was sweating. Mr. Bai, have you forgotten which key opens this door? Zhang Ju and Zhu Long crowded over. Chen Ge had not expected the lock to be so tough to pick. He swiftly and quietly put the scalpel and iron thread away. Before the members got too near, he pushed a large key into the keyhole. Someone has blocked this keyhole. I'll force it open now, and tomorrow, I'll get someone to come fix it. Chen Ge signaled for the members to get back. He looked around for signs of cameras. They were still quite close to the stairs. Find someone to fix it later? 
The members were still quite confused when they saw Chen Go landed a powerful kick on the door. Bang! The lock that had been tampered with could not withstand such a heavy blow, and it swung open from the kick. Zhou Tu, you wait outside with Xiao Wang. If anyone comes, just tell them you're a student here and you just came because you heard the loud noise, Chen Ge said and then led Zhang Ju and Zhu Long into the autopsy room. Sir, are you sparing us the responsibility in case we're caught? Wang Yicheng was quite touched. The man before him did not look that special, but his little and insignificant gestures would often touch others. It's more like that he wants us to be his lookouts. Is that something a teacher should do? Zhou Tu held Wang Yicheng while looking at the broken door. The autopsy room there was only half the size of Zhejiang Medical University's one, but it had all the necessary equipment. In fact, it looked just like a smaller copy of the autopsy room at the university. The underground morgue is at Zhejiang Medical University, and that university is one of the pre-quests for the School of the Afterlife. Chen Gu was considering the connection between the two quests. He was only thinking about it for a minute, but when he turned back, he noticed that his two members were acting strangely. Zhu Long stood next to the operating table, and he was caressing it like he was touching the skin of his lover. His gaze seemed distant as he glanced at the cold metallic table. Zhang Zhu, though, stood next to the window. He pulled back the curtain and stared dumbly at the mirror frame hidden behind the curtain. Why would there be a mirror frame here? In the maintenance room in the Eastern Campus Staff Dormitory, Chen Gu had encountered several mirrors dyed red with blood. He had noticed that mirrors seemed to have a special meaning at this school. Why isn't there a mirror in the frame? Mirrors are not allowed inside the autopsy room, so the mirror has probably been taken away. The statement slipped out of Zhang Zhu's lips. Then how did you know there is a mirror frame hidden here? I have no idea. Zhang Zhu scratched his head, and his voice became louder. I really don't know. How did I know? I just opened the curtain, and there it was. Hmm, I believe you. Chen Ge grabbed hold of Zhang Zhu lightly. It's going to be fine. Half of Zhang Zhu's face was covered with scars. When he was agitated, his expression was very scary, but Chen Gu did not let him go. He felt a different emotion from this panicking young man, guilt. Zhang Ju's frightening expression belied a heart that was shivering in fear. Chen Gu had no idea what had happened to the young man, but he knew that the lock to the young man's memory was slowly crumbling due to this mirror frame that he had found. Based on the color and style of the frame, the owner of the mirror was probably a girl. Many clues were slowly being stitched together in Chen Ji's mind. He was reminded of the story that Zhang Zhu had told, the young man appeared to have been the witness of a horrifying murder, 